Yeah, I've got a chief dog. Differently interesting extra time communion for minicab drivers. Take the money and sit back down again. Breastfeeding mums. Oh, you've not been giving it its breakfast again, have you? And people disturbed by urban foxes engaged in the act of lovemaking behind their bins. Anybody there? The two mics. Overworked, overweight, overpaid, overnight. On Talk Sport. Look at the light! How many macaques do you know that can take their own pictures? Well, plenty of monkeys have taken pictures of themselves. Really? They set okay. up the camera and all they have to do is press the button. Yeah. It's well, true. That's easier said than done. I mean, we can't even get you to do that. The only people I could save rabbits to was my ducks on the pond. Yeah. But they, you know, just quack, 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 quack. Yeah. They don't actually... Not much of a conversation. No, really. exactly. A bit one side. A bit like the show. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two Mikes, and I'm delighted to say at the end of another fabulous week, it's time to say a very good morning to Mr. Mike, a porky, a parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. And a very good morning to you, Mike. And I have to say, mm. I am utterly astonished by this um, decision. The Muirfield one? Um, I mean, I still can't believe it. Right. I find it absolutely astonishing. You know, people... You mean the fact that they haven't decided to join the sort um, of uh, 2016 year well, that we actually live in? Well, you see, that's one, of the, that's one of the first things that hit me. People saying, oh, we're in 2016 now. But quite frankly, if I'd have been born in 1916 mm. or 1816, yeah. I would still have accorded the same respect to a woman as a human being that I do to a man. Sure, but I, in 1916, I, yeah. the world was very different, wasn't it? Well, it, it was very different, but I, there was still no way in the world that women should have, should have been excluded from anything like a golf club yeah. or anything like that. Well, OK, the, the world has changed. Now, well, but they were, and guess what? They also excluded from yeah. Troon, where they're having the Open this year. They still exclude. They're still excluded. I mean, Troon members are now being consulted on it, and I presume after what's happened today, yeah. uh, with the Open being stripped by the Royal and Ancient yes. from Muirfield, that I, the Troon members will decide to go the other way. I find it astonishing. Do you know who I'd like to interview? I'd who? like to interview the wives of some of the male members yeah. who voted not to admit women to yeah. their golf club. Most and of them I'd would li- probably be quite happy. Well, well, I'd like to go to their homes mm. and look behind those twitching curtains to find what goes on inside those mm. people's lives. Yeah. Because it is such a... Antediluvian and yeah, archaic it is. view Very to good have. Word, that. You know, to have that, that I'm not going to be a member of any club that admits women. Yeah. I mean, hang on, we all marry women. Women are our mothers, well, they're our all daughters. You well, married one. No, no, but you know, no, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, I just cannot believe it. And, well, I mean, and, golf is a very, very strange sport in this way. Well, I mean, I, the, the, well, the people to, at Muirfield are very strange yeah, but people, it's not put just, it that way. It's not just at Muirfield. I mean, this goes on yeah. in an awful lot of places. Royal yeah. St George has only just changed, I think, last year. Yeah. Uh, as I say, Troon still has it. Mm. I was a member of a golf club in America where only wives uh, could come along if, if they happened to be, or, you know, partners of, of people if they were... If Which they one were, was that? Uh, Pelham Country Club. Oh, yeah, right. They yeah. were only allowed to, to, to come along and they could use all the facilities and yeah. they could charge as many uh, uh, drinks and, 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 and meals to their account of yeah. their husband if they wanted. Yeah. But there was one case where a guy got divorced and his mm. ex-wife turned up mm. uh, to have a game of golf yeah. and she was politely told to leave. Because Not only that, handed her, uh, her belongings from her locker in a plastic bag. Because, because, because her husband was no longer a member? No, the husband was still a member. Oh, I see. The so new, they were but, no longer married, I'm But sorry, the new yeah. wife had now taken over. Oh, so, so the new wife had the locker and the old wife was told to, to hop um, it. Unbelievable. But this is the kind of thing that goes on in the world of golf all the time. I mean, not only should Muirfield quite rightly never be considered for the open golf tournament right. ever again, but it should be excluded from any sporting organisation of its name. You see what I mean? How do you mean? Well, well, you mean it shouldn't be allowed to be a member of the it, it Royal and Ancient sort it, it of Society? It shouldn't be allowed to be a member of the Royal and Ancient Society. It should never be referred to as a sporting organisation Well, the Royal and Ancient itself only changed relatively recently, Yeah, well, it? at least they've changed now. At least they've, they've got the message. Yeah. But you, you can't... You just can't have a world where women are treated as second-class citizens. It's, well, I couldn't it's agree so more. bizarre. I couldn't agree more. Do you want to hear what Ernie Els had to say about them being taken off the open uh, um, circuit? I would, yeah. Go on, then. It's unfortunate that, uh, you know, for, for us, for the, for the Open Championship uh, rota, that, you know, uh, one of their rules don't fit in with the Open Championship committee's uh, uh, way they want to go forward. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. You know, they, they have their right for their own rules and the Open Championship is going with a sign of the time. So, uh, you know... It is what it is. I mean, I can't say they're wrong and we're right and whatever, you know. I'd, I'd love to play there as a, as a competitor. I'd love to play the tournament, uh, the golf course, because it's one of the best links courses in the world. But, you know, we, we're in this situation and it'll, it'll be missed, you know, really. I mean, the guys will really miss it because it's a great course. 
Uh, he won it, of course, in 2002, yeah. which was the year yeah. I was there. Oh, that yeah, was the right. year that they had the terrible rainstorm. And, right, you know, okay, yeah. Half of the, it was a very yeah. eerie sort of uh, uh, situation because yeah. it was so bad, the weather. Yeah. But I think Tiger Woods went round about 86 in one of the rounds. Yeah, right, yeah. And it's an amazing place. I remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not sure if I've been there, actually. I've been to two courses in yeah. Scotland. I can't remember which one It's the were. one that's right out on the coast. Yeah, you right drive all the, the way out from You drive all the yeah. way out from Edinburgh, and it's yeah. just as far as you can go. I think we have been there. I think we've done one there, honestly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure because I remember staying in a hotel in Edinburgh. Well, 2002, you might have been there. Is there a Another first class golf course right next door to it. Well, Mule, yeah, there is. There was Gullen, but Gullen yeah, is not yeah. actually an open. A no, that's right. Course. No, no, I didn't mean it's very good. Yeah, very posh. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very good. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, Gullen's there. not that posh actually. I mean, Gullen's a place which is kind of mm. a, effectively a public course, but right. I mean, you know, it's a great course. Yeah, sure. But now they've got Archerfield, which is just down the road, which is very posh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's it's the home of golf. That whole that whole area, really. It's, it's 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 incredible. I mean, look, if a group of men want to get together and say we want to have a little club mm. where we only like, have... I don't think there's anything wrong with that. actually. Well, I'm about to say, well, you know, we only have boys and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's fine. But, I mean, they should hold their meetings in a cave or something like that because it simply doesn't fit in yeah. with the way society works mm. and it's an extraordinary attitude to have. I well, mean, it's a very interesting situation, isn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, I'm for a long time... I mean, my dad introduced me to golf when I was 11. Sure. We belong to a golf club called Royal Mid Surrey. Yes. Now, for a long time... Mm. Uh, I don't know what it's like there. I'm, I'm not a member there anymore, but mm. the old clubhouse burned down. You've probably been there. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Right? Uh, yeah. they, they had a men's bar mm. and they had a mixed bar. Yes. And half of the club house was for men only mm. and the other half was was for both yeah you know yeah and a lot of women didn't like that yeah and uh, women would say were, were told yeah but you don't pay as much money to have a subscription at the mm. golf course so therefore you know you don't have as many rights as the men do mm. and lots of them of course who were very successful women said but we'll pay the same yeah we don't care you know, charge us the same amount of money extraordinary it's not a problem extraordinary um but anyway look uh surely your people come to their senses won't they i mean listen to ernie l saying it's a it's a great shame it's yeah. a great course one of the best links courses in the world yeah and it'll no longer host the Open, well, quite I'm rightly, sure, won't, won't hope, uh, host the Open uh, golf tournament again. I'm sure there might be people uh, who are at the club who would have known this would be the result of them voting no. Yeah. Uh, and they will be people who will say, we don't care whether we have the Open or not. And yeah. that's the problem. But you see, that's, um, that's my point, Mike. If they change now, you suspect they're only changing because it suits them to have the Open, because yeah. it's great for publicity and revenue and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I but, don't think they actually need the revenue or the publicity. Well, I think they, that's the problem. They, they probably don't. But what I'm saying is, if they suddenly did a vault face, you know, mm. Just be to, to fit in. Yeah, I I would still not allow them to be to go back on the rotor until the committee members who'd voted mm. to exclude women were booted out of the club. You can't well, have you them see, there. No, just, I think, just, I think, I think no, that's you going can't. too far. No, it's not because they're, they're only changing their mind because it suits circumstances. Oh, no, but you can't their make actual everybody... prejudice against no, but women. You can, yeah, but you can't is, make everybody... is clearly so deeply rooted. Yeah. you'd have to boot them out the club. But they would say that it's not. I mean, if you listen to what Peter Alice said about Muirfield a few weeks ago, yep. he was talking about how many of the women who go there and play golf with their husbands mm. or play golf with each other because their yeah. husbands are members, yes. uh, who now currently get everything for free, mm. would not be very happy if they were forced to be paid to, to, to pay a bill uh, at the end of the year because they had to become members. So. He He's still got that kind of rather old-fashioned view well, I think of the world of I, th- I think they're rather odd-thinking people as well. You know, there shouldn't be any discrimination whatsoever between men and women in any uh, area of society, but particularly not there in, but you in see, a leisure pursuit But, but like also, golf. but I guess, I mean, there are these luncheon clubs, for example, in London. Yeah. Uh, I went to a place once with a, uh, the editor of The Express called White's. Yes. And White's is a male-only yeah, club. Yeah, I know White's. Yeah, I know White's. And it's, yeah. in, uh, it's in the mall, right? Yes. And I sat there and thought, this is the most bizarre situation I've ever been in. You yeah. know, in a room full of men having mm. lunch. Yes. No women. No women serving. Yeah, I t- I totally Absolutely agree. Absolutely not a woman to be seen. And I wouldn't ever join a club like that. No, I wouldn't. But on either. the other hand, it's okay for me anyway. If mm. they want to have a club like that, yeah. that's fine. I don't really yeah, have a problem. No, with that. I totally agree. I just don't have any part of it. And when it comes to being accepted into the broader um, aspect of society, mm. which includes one of the world's great sporting tournaments, yes. Then, if supposing White's was a venue for, say, boxing matches yeah. or something like that. Well, there's been a lot of boxing uh, clubs in the past yeah, that have been male yeah, only, right? Yeah, right. But you wouldn't take one there if it was the heavyweight championship of the world. I, d- I, I, guess, mean, I guess you wouldn't. No, of course you wouldn't. I guess you, you wouldn't. Know. It's yeah. a very, very strange situation. It's a very bizarre situation. I went to one with, uh, we were talking about Paul Potts last night, Mr. Potts, and he took me to one. I can't remember which one it was. It wasn't White's. It was one of those other ones, but but well, that the was Garrick all, or something like that. The Garrick, it, it might have been the Garrick. I think it, that was an all male well, place for a while. I'm yeah, not sure okay. It well, it's all male, and and it, it not only was it bizarre that it was only men, mm. but 
the thing was, which is even more bizarre, and I thought, this is, this is very weird, mm. there were no individual tables in the dining room. Right. There were just three massively long tables. Oh, right. And people just came and sat down on them. So like, it's like a sort of re- reconnection with boarding school. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and you could sit away from people or close to people or whatever yeah. you wanted. It was, yeah. it was so bizarre. It was. It was like, it was like blokes who'd never grown up from, mm. you know, the confines of the cloisters at, at, well, I at must Eton say, or something I mean, like that. My, my earlier um, um, sort of yeah. um, conversion to yes. you becoming you know, a slightly different person over the course of the last two weeks yeah. is now complete. I'm delighted that you've come into the, uh, well, uh, the new century and that you've joined well, don't me. Don't be ridiculous. How do you think I could possibly women? support a discriminatory uh, rule against women? It's ludicrous. I'm not suggesting that you would ever support any discrimination, but exactly. you have in the past been labelled a bit of a sexist on certain things. No, on no, no. certain things. No, no, you, that you've said. No, you have very unfairly adopted this moniker for me, Sid the Sexist. Because it's not, my, it's not my name for you. Because it came I, from one of the listeners. You know, I respect some of the values and traditions of the way we live, but I'm not a sexist at all, and I get very angry when you call me one. I know you're not. And you're a benevolent sexist. And if uh, if it persists, I will um, refuse to work with you in the future. <laughs> Quite as simple as that. Oh, we'll perhaps you go work with a woman instead. Yes, that's right, yeah. Uh, how about this one from Spencer, just before we run out of time? Right. Uh, hi, Paul. Quick question at the start of the show. Yeah. Can you tell me how Nottingham Jungle FC got on this season? Nottingham Jungle FC? Yeah. No. Why would I know? Well, because you confused forest and jungle last night. I think you're just picking up on that. What do you mean? Well, you call it the Amazon Forest, do you remember? Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Uh, a pathetic uh, jive and a pathetic <laughs> joke to have at the start of the show, but in, you know, for, for means of, of making the show run freely, I'll just titter and uh, forget about it, OK? It's something very odd going on. I don't know what it is. Yes. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. This yes. is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Then it started to hook just a wee, wee bit And that's when my caddy lost sight of it That little white pellet has never been found to this day But it went straight down the middle Like they say this is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Uh, it's the Porky Quiz coming up a little bit later on. It's on Pirates this uh, this yes. week, of course, which will be fascinating yes. to see. Uh, as Porky's been claiming on Twitter that his family have a great seafaring background. Oh, indeed. Uh, although some people will be making fun of that. But uh, I'll read you some more of those tweets out a little bit later well, on. People are calling me uh, Captain Pugwash. Captain Pugwash, which is unfair. And Captain I, Birdseye. I don't think Captain Pugwash was a pirate. I think Captain Pugwash. Well, he was Pugwash... sort of a joke pirate, wasn't he? No, he wasn't. No, he was. Uh, well, he I was... hope there's no questions about him in the uh, quiz then. He, he was a merchant uh, trader. Was he? Yes. Oh, OK. Yes. A taxi man says it may be wrong. But Muirfield as a member's private club has every right to allow who they want in. Yeah, of course uh, they have. But, but I they... reckon Muirfield members will vote again and result may change. Yeah, of course they have. But they, they shouldn't then expect the world's top golf tournament to be played at their uh, no. establishment. Indeed, here's a good one from yeah. Jason. Is Muirfield Golf Course run by the Taliban? Exactly. Hashtag planks. Which, yes. I mean, it's about the only other organisation you can imagine treats women in this way, actually. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Which might be a bit harsh, but, yeah. uh, you know, well, that's I'm the sure truth. it's true. Let's talk to Karina, who's from Rotherham, right. uh, who's a big golf fan, right. been to many golf courses. We'll get her view. Karina, very good morning. Hi, I'm hi. Good morning, yeah. Mark. Good morning yeah, to you both. Yeah. So, are you are you, are you yeah. a, a player, or do you just visit uh, golf courses and watch? Um, well, I just I, I just like golf. I've liked golf and watched golf for a number of years and everything. The thing I think about golf is that um, there's still quite a lot of elitism about it, and a, you know it's still seen as a sport for people with a lot of um, money. And, and I do come, you do come across really what you call sort of the older generation. Yes. People who go to watch it and things like that who still got these very old-fashioned values about um, about women. I mean, it's only within the last year that the RNA have actually allowed women to actually um, join them. But when you look at like the people who go to the open, these RNA people mm. run it, and they are generally older, very older, elite, old-fashioned guys. You know, from probably Eton or Oxford or whatever. You yes. know, and then and unfortunately there is. <laughs> There is still there is still a lot of a lot of that about you know. Have you have you, have you come across any of it yourself, Karina? Have you ever sort of come up against the, the sort of the male sexism in golf clubs? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, a little bit. Sometimes when I've been in clubhouses and things like that and whatever, and um, you know, people think, oh, what does she know about golf and what's she doing here and all that sort of thing, etc. You know, mm. so I do. You know, I do still. Um, you know, I do still tend to get that a bit. Yeah, Karina, and, what, do and, you know, what do you think? What do you think of the women who are married to these committee members who voted not to admit women to their golf club? 
Well, um... What sort of woman marries a bloke who is anti-woman? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I don't know really how to say this, but I think that it tend, some of these... I tend to come across some of these... Um, Women will put up with it because a yeah. lot of them sometimes have married them because they've got they've got a lot of money, you know, and whatever. Because there is a lot of money in people who who do like golf because yeah, a lot of these golf clubs are expensive to join. You sure. know, it's not cheap. All, all the top golf courses are not are not cheap to join at all, and it's um, well. I mean, this is one of yeah. the things. Yeah. Yeah. but I mean, so, sorry, Karina, am I putting words in your mouth if I say that you have contempt for a woman who is married to a man who, and, and a reason for marrying might be might be because he's wealthy, wealthy enough to join a golf course, but then excludes women from the the golf club. Not ne- not necessarily. No, no, I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm just saying right. that 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 you know that does happen at all. No, I'm not saying that at all because I mean I get. Because I'm a female, I love sport. I yeah. still get a lot of, um, I get, I get a lot of that, you know. Because, like, say, like, I like boxing a lot as well, and boxing is still largely a male, yes. you know, sort of dominated sport, you sure. know. So sure. I have to kind of stick up for myself a lot, but um, mm. you know. But golf, I mean, golf, <laughs> it is getting better now. With, with there are a lot more females playing it, and TV do cover, you know, sort of the women's tournaments and things. And, and mm. it's just coming together a lot more. They cover a lot of the top women's tournaments. And there are some very good, mm. you know, some very good women golfers. Yeah, this is, still this is one of the reasons, Karina. <clears throat> it, well, it is, Karina, but it's not yeah. just releases about women. I mean, there's a lot of releases in golf generally. Karina, thank you very much mm. indeed for your call. I mean, mm. one, of the, one of the things about uh, the objections to this is that yeah. people, many uh, women in professional golf are saying, you know, mm. we're trying to grow the sport. We're trying to get more women involved in the sport. We're trying yeah. to get more people involved in yeah. the sport. There's an awful lot of golf clubs up and down the country are, fall, are falling on hard times because people aren't playing as much golf. Oh, they're closing down all over time. the place. You know, no, you're absolutely right. They haven't got the yeah. money to play. But, I mean, if you think you can, as any bloke, if you think you can mm. go, for example, and turn up and get a game at Muirfield tomorrow, yeah. it's not possible. No. It won't happen. You have to either be invited by a member, yeah. you have to make an application, yes. you have to submit your handicap certificate, you have to be the right kind of person. Oh, they, you know, this is not they, just about women. By the way, Mike, they'd examine all your equipment yeah. to see if it was worthy of being, wrong with my a, 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 of being towed around, you know, pulled around uh, a golf course like Muirfield, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. No, exactly They'd come right. out in the car park and look at your car, now, let, and they'd yeah, examine they the clothes you were wearing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. they're, 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 it is not very easy to get onto a place like... Like, uh, like Troon or onto Ex- a place exactly. like Muirfield by any stretch of the imagination. Exactly. But look at what some of these people are saying. Andy yeah. in Glasgow has yeah. texted in, yeah. basic human right, freedom of association. This is feminism gone mad, yeah. not an equality issue. Well, Andy, it's not a question of whether yeah. it's an equality issue or feminism not gone mad. All. They can do whatever they want, but they can't be part of the open circuit. It's as simple that, as that. that that's those, right. those are the rules that the RA why, why should, have put down. Why should they be admitted into the most civilised society in the world, which is our society here in the United Kingdom, in Great Britain? Why should they be admitted? I don't feel as strong as you about I, that. I do. I, I do. don't feel as strong well, as that. I think they've got every right to. I mean, you're basically saying that they yeah. should have their, their members who have voted against women yeah. kicked out of the club. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and practically have the place completely changed. I, I don't do. agree with that. Well, I, because then you're changing no, the face of a place, no, which no. is actually a very old and traditional. No, place. no. Hang on, Mike. Qualify that. I said if they want the open to go back there, okay. then they must get rid right. of all the committee members who voted but against voting saying, women. All right, okay, so you're not saying they need to do that now. Well, I, look. Like you, it's a free world. Mm. And if a group of blokes want to get together and say this huge place called a golf course with its thousands of acres of mm. land and all that yeah. is, is a domain for men only, that's fine if they want to do that. Mm. But they should build a wall around it and put a little sign over the top saying, you know, no women so must you're, enter here. So and, you're and, saying that's what they should do now, though? Well, what I'm saying is... It's I think you're being very hard on them. I'm not being hard on them. I'm, I, 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 I'm appalled by their attitude. I, I absolutely and utterly dislike those committee members who voted against admitting well, they're not women just to their club. Members, they're members of the club. Well, members of the club. Yeah. Every one of them I dislike. I wouldn't I wouldn't have a drink with them. Really? I, I are you telling have... me that you don't drink with people who are sexist? Uh, well, I try not to. If I knew they were sexist, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, but there's an awful lot of sexism around out there, you know. Well, maybe there is, but I, I, I don't support sexism in any form or fashion. But it does and, exist. And I despise people who do, so I've got sport, nothing to do with it. There's quite a lot of it around in football as well. You ask most football fans what they think of women's football. Yeah. Do you think they'll say, oh, yeah, we love the fact that it's on TV. We think it's fantastic. No, that's not d- what they'll no, say. No, no, that's different. That's different. It's not different. No, it is, Mike. What they're saying is that the quality of the way football is played yeah. is not as high when you see women playing it as it is when well, men are playing it. that's the same argument about tennis, the same argument about golf, the same argument about basketball. It, it, yes, it is. It, it, women's it, golf is not as good as men's golf. It's as simple as that. 
I, I don't agree with that because the, the the issue with football is the physiology of women being involved in a so contact is, so sport. So is every other sport. No, no, but tennis is not a contact sport. Tennis? And, uh, yeah, and golf well, is yeah, not a, men, tennis, a contact men's sport. Men's tennis, uh, the men serve the ball faster, they serve it harder. Yeah, but there's a beauty play... about the women's game, which is separate, yeah, yeah, but, and you can yeah, appreciate. But, if, yeah, but a woman can't play a man at tennis, right? No. And, a, woman, and that a, would woman be can't, a woman can't play a man at golf. Of course she can't. She can't hit the ball as far. Right. Physio- so, physiologically, exactly. she's, so not, that's she's my not point. strong. How about this from uh, Mark in yeah. Southport, yeah. who says, when I heard about the Muirfield vote today, I laughed my head off. Finally, a belated kick in the teeth for the 21st century PC brigade. Yeah. Hilarious. Let the women build their own golf course. Well, you know, is it, sorry, is he saying that... Uh, he's saying he's agree- in agreement with Well, him. fine. Why doesn't he come to John Muirfield and the rest of us will get on with well, he the might life, not get he? He? Here's one from somebody who doesn't give a name. World. There's 20 all-male golf clubs in Scotland. There's 25 all-female. People that interfering Nicola Sturgeon should do a bit of research before mouthing off. No, not there at are, all. There are no Roman Catholics allowed on the throne, but hey-ho, that's OK. But yeah. all hell breaks loose because men want to have a club to themselves. No, 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 it, it doesn't. The people have got it all wrong. Men can have a club to themselves any time they like, but they shouldn't then expect the Open Golf Tournament, which is the world's most prestigious golf tournament, to be played at their course. It's yeah, as but, simple as that. Yeah, but you don't think they should because what you're saying is, is that mm. they should be made pariahs of society because of this decision that they've made. And I don't think no, they should. No, oh, I regard them as prize of society. Yeah. That's my own personal mm. choice. Right. I wouldn't go anywhere near Muirfield ever again with that attitude. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if they... I mean, what about those social it, clubs that you used to go to from time to time? I know it was a yeah. long time ago, but yeah. when you go to, say, the Labour Club yes. uh, or the Conservative Club yes. uh, or the British Legion, quite a lot of those places were male I wasn't aware they were, seriously. Well, an awful lot of them were. I wasn't aware they were, and, and what's more... Like, all, all, when working, working men's clubs, an awful all, lot of them Hang on, didn't almost wholesalely, the bar staff in those sort of establishments Establishments in those days were women, right. so they weren't exclu- You know, they weren't exclusive to men at all. In, as far as I, I was never aware that they were. So I, you know, I, and I still, I don't think they are these days. I don't think they were in those days. Yeah. Well, George in Dundee says no committee member voted against. In fact, one of the things that's interesting, yeah. and I was wondering whether they didn't get the gerrymandering right on the vote. Yes. Because they've said that one of the uh, officials of the club came out and said they actually had a majority of people voting mm. yes to let women in. Right. But it wasn't enough because they previously set the bar at sixty six percent of okay. the vote. So they needed two yeah. thirds of the people voting, but not everybody voted. Right. So let's and make this clear. Brains, it wasn't the committee then. It wasn't the committee. No. Right. The committee, the I think, recommended that the right. members should vote for women to be allowed in. Right, OK. And well, the committee, good for the were, committee. Over, the committee well were overruled. Well done. Any member who voted against it, in my view, not the sort of person I'd have a drink with, thank you. No, indeed. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes on. Women ain't banned from the course, they just can't be members of one club. Well, it's not just one club, George. Yeah, uh, right. As we've just been told, there's 25 male-only clubs in yep. Scotland. Troon is also one of them, where the Open is being played later on. Yep. Uh, you know, and they'll probably mm. have to change their uh, articles of association, I would imagine. Uh, but give us a call, 08717 This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Well, I'm a lucky man with fire in my hands. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. And of course, it's a talky quiz tonight on the Pirates. What about yes. old David Ginola, by the way? Now, it's a bit of a mixed story, this. Did David mm. have a bit of a collapse or something on a golf course somewhere no, hot? No, uh, he was playing football. Football? Uh, Where was he playing, he was playing football? football? He was playing football somewhere in the south of France. South of France. And the story originally that came out sort of, yeah. a few hours ago mm. was that he had had a heart attack mm. and was being airlifted to some hospital or other in the south of France. My God. But since that's happened, mm. uh, happily, he's put out a tweet himself uh, yeah. on his own Twitter account, which yeah. I was about to find, mm-hmm. uh, in which he basically says that he was rather stupid to be um, uh, playing football in such hot conditions right. in the middle of the day. Right. Uh, and that he's fine. He's just having some tests made. It says here, yeah. footy match in the midday sun, not very clever. Mm. Now having some tests done. Whoever voted for a World Cup in Qatar in the summer. Yeah. So I'm delighted to say that I think he's OK. Well, listen, David, if you're listening, I know you are a regular listener, even though you're down in uh, the south of France, which, to of soon. course, is his manor. He was it born is. and brought yeah. up in Jean Le Pen. It, it was know. indeed, yeah, not yeah. far from there. Not a stone's throw. Saint-Tropez. Yeah, Saint-Tropez, Saint-Tropez yes. made yes. famous by Brigitte Bardot. Really? OK, yeah. yeah. Are you going to carry on with this uh, ridiculous uh, no, French no, accent? No, no, What I'm saying is, David, if you're listening, remember, I know all about... I'm surprised uh, you haven't been in touch with him. I was going to say... such a great I, mate of his. I know all about Dickie Hearts, and, uh, you know, I can give you sucker and comfort, mate. Don't worry about that. Give us a call. Yeah, now. give him the porky diet. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you how Drink to... Drink four uh, bottles of Pinot Grigio every day. I'll tell you how to get well soon. Now, listen, talking about uh, David, David, yes. of course, is a lucky man to have been born with quite a handsome face, OK? Indeed, yes. Um, now, I've got a book. It's fantastic. And, it, and it's called Success and Luck. And Luck. 
Mm. Luck, L U C K. Yeah. Not Luke, L O O K. Right. Success and luck, okay? Yeah. Good fortune and the myth of meritocracy. Yes. Written by, by a guy called Robert H. Frank. Uh -huh. Okay? Right. Well, that's irrelevant. Who's but Robert I mean, H. Frank. Well, he's the bloke who wrote this book. What does the H stand for? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't okay. matter. Right. Now, what he says is. He, he makes it clear in this book, it's a fantastic book, that actually, although people who are talented get on in life and succeed and all that kind mm. of stuff, uh, most people who succeed in life, or at least 50% of them, do it through a stroke of luck. Yes, and that when luck you, is very important. When you get a stroke of luck, you shouldn't turn it down. Mm. Now, he cites Bill Gates, OK? Yeah. Now, Bill Gates was a bright and hard-working student, uh, but he also had the astronomical good fortune to attend one of the only private schools in America... And he was sent there by his parents, who were successful business people, right? Right. The only, one of the only private schools in America that, at the time, offered students unlimited access to early timeshare computer terminals. Uh -huh. He could submit programmes, which he wrote up himself, run them straight away and receive immediate feedback. Nobody else in America had the had access to this. Right. Uh, or, I mean, less than... And so he was just fortunate to be the one that did. Exactly. Yeah. Less than 0.1% of people yeah. could have ac access to such computer sure. software. Yeah. And, uh, and Gates himself, um, Bill Gates himself, says when he was asked how many teens from his era, i.e., uh, you know, in America, teens of the same age, had such a fortunate background, mm. he said, I would be amazed if there were 50 other people of my age in the world... Right? Yeah. Uh, who had access to the sort of computer software that I had access to. I had better exposure to software development at a young age than anyone did in that period of time. Yeah. And it was all because of an incredibly, incredibly lucky set of events. I was brought up in the right place, had the right parents, went to the right school. Mm. All these factors came together. Yeah, but you see, that's an interesting point as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because is it lucky that you happen to be born to a, a, a set of parents yes. who have a reasonable a, a exactly. sense of, uh, uh, of what you should be doing, uh, who push you to go to university? I mean, sure. that's not necessarily luck, is it? Well, there is an element of luck for the person who is the benefactor. I mean, for instance, I was looking today at mm. a report that Brooklyn Beckham, yeah. who I think is 17, is going out with a 19-year-old girl who is yeah. already a Hollywood superstar. Yeah. Uh, I don't know her name, but I mean... you Which know, the, guy, about... the, the girl he was pictured with the other day. Yes, that's yeah. right, yeah. Her name mm. is, is, you know, uh, sort of uh, Martine Ezra or something like that. Martine Ezra, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, something you, like that. Now, if he wasn't Brooklyn Beckham, mm. he wouldn't be going out with a 19-year-old Hollywood superstar that's true. at the age of 17. But is that luck? Yeah. Yes, of course it is. is it's, it? luck, it's luck for him. Mm. Don't you remember? I, I remember a report years ago. They were on a... Uh, not necessarily, because, I mean, it might not be a great thing to go out with a Hollywood superstar when you're that young, because it well, might be actually quite unlucky, you might say, depending well, I think, on your I view. I think most young men at 17 in the world mm. would say, I'd rather be Brooklyn Beckham than they me. Might, but they might, yeah, but they might be wrong about that. Particularly if you lived in a council house in outer... Uh, Tirana, no, oh, no, out of Tirana, which is the capital of Albania. Why are you going to Albania again? Well, just Why are you because giving them a kicking again. Well, I'm not Second giving them a kicking. No, I'm not giving them a kicking. But no, but, but I mean, when you were 17, would yes. you like to have been able to go out uh, with some woman from Chester? Except every time you took her down to the local disco, yeah. there'd be photographers outside waiting to take your picture. Yeah, I would. I would have yeah. not. No, I would. You would have liked that. Oh, of course so I would. So that, that is informing your perspective. That, right that would have made no, me. That would have made I me wouldn't. feel like you know, I, 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 I was a winner. Yeah, and I like the feeling of being a winner. Though. No, See, it's for not. Me, no. I would rather. No. I mean, I would hate to ever no. be famous to the point where people follow me around and take my picture. I've seen. No. I've seen what it does to people. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, listen. Let me give you a few more facts here. He gives an example. This is the author of this book. Okay, uh, Robert H. Frank. He says, um, for instance, look at this. Fifty years ago, you could earn a decent living as an opera singer, mm. even if you were not the best in the world. Yeah. Local audiences were more than happy to pay to watch, given that they couldn't travel to La Scala, yeah. which is the famous opera house in Milano. In Milano, yeah. I've been there, by the way. Have you? I've been on the to stage. La Scala? Yeah, I've been on the stage. You've been on the stage? I went in and had a look at it. And went, and when you've we... been on the stage? I went in and I asked the guy if I could go in and have a look at La Scala. Because it's a magnificent building. It's one of the world's well, great yeah, opera you don't houses. Care about opera. I care about the finest of anything. And really? La Scala is the you finest. You do not care about the finest of anything. You I don't do. care about the finest of food. You eat a load yeah, of old rubbish yeah. out of tins. Anyway, you don't listen, like the listen, finest of listen. wine. Let me, just, let me just finish. So that you couldn't travel to La Scala. Now, today, with high-fidelity sound recordings mm. and costless distribution via the internet, consumers can listen to the finest singers instantly. They do not have to travel to La Scala, OK? Yeah. Therefore, but then that's not the same, is it? Hang on. Therefore, the best opera singers, often propelled by a slice of luck 
can now corner the global market from one room, that room being a recording studio, OK? Right. Take digital music sales... Well, is this guy only just discovered all this? It's been going on for decades. No, 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 no. The top 1,000th, get this, <laughs> the top 1,000th of mm. 1%. Yeah. Have you got what that is? Yeah. That top 1,000th of 1%, 1% yes. Yeah, top percent uh, of song titles now account for 15% of all sales. What's right? that got to do with luck? Uh, what it's got to do with luck is that that is up <laughs> from 7% just four years ago, and the figure is growing at that rate every year. What do you mean it's up from 7%? If uh, it's 1,000th of 1%, no, it's, no, it's down no, from 7%. No, no, no. 1,000th of 1% titles now account for 15% of all oh, sales. Oh, that's what you mean, OK. It was only 7% oh, four see. years ago. Right, do you see okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, your slice well, yeah, of luck but, I mean, if you being look good at, at what pro- you've got these days means you could be the best. Yeah, but what's that got to do with luck, though? It's everything I to do with luck. I don't see what that's got to do with luck. No, it's everything to do with luck. I don't think everything you're explaining it properly. No, I am. I am. I mean, look into the political territory, OK? <coughs> uh, I would say, I would say, um, people who accept tax... Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what uh, it, it, this book gets into as yeah. well. Now, you know that the acting profession, mm. often referred to as the lovies... Yes. They feel that their slice of luck in being given... Not the talent of, of an actor or actress, because there are millions of well, actors the and actresses. The opportunity. Yes, the I opportunity get that. To... Well, look at the woman who's taken over from Sheridan Smith. Absolutely, absolutely. They, they feel that, you know, why me? You know, you know when you're in a, like, a situation where other people get killed, but you don't? You get yeah. this guilt complex, you should have been killed, mm. you know what I mean? And, Supposedly, yeah. Uh, and, and how do you live with yourself when your mates have died and all that kind of stuff? Well, the opposite happens with, like, acting professions. Does it? So you've got thousands of actors, you've yeah. all gone to RAD or something like that, yeah. all gone to the same stage school... Mm. But one of you has emerged as James Corden, say. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying it is James Corden. Yeah. I'm saying one of you has emerged okay. and become a huge star. Well, Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, what happens then, and I'm not applying this to James Corden, what happens then is you then suddenly decide, I'm going to have a huge conscience about everybody in the world who hasn't been as lucky as me and yeah. start um, bellowing out ridiculous left-wing nonsensical rubbish mm. about, you know, how I love the everybody in the yeah. world and, and all that. Because... You are doing that to counter the guilt of the luck that you have been given. Maybe, you see what I mean? Maybe. Yeah? yeah? Do you understand that? I do understand that. Yeah, well, you see, that that's what it's all about. Well, I mean, I don't, it's a very, very big area. I think there's no question yeah. that, that all of us who have done well in life have been lucky in one way, shape or form. I mean, you can probably yeah. go back to something that happened to you uh, where you were fortunate. But then you've also got to work on being fortunate. And remember that famous quote from Gary Player? Yes. Uh, who said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yes. Which was re- referring to the way he played golf. And, and that's what about, true. What about and that's true. You can't just sit around yeah. waiting for something lucky no. to happen. And what about my famous quote? What's your famous quote? Well, my, everybody has my famous quote. Which if one? you're not winning, it's because you're not trying hard enough, well, OK? That's, well, then, well, then you're, you're not bringing luck into that. Though, yeah, I am. I am. Well, where's luck in that conversation? I am lucky enough to have been born mm. with the inspirational qualities to keep trying and trying and trying until I succeed, yeah. OK? But but then you keep yeah. failing, is what you're telling me. No, no, I've failed at a few things, yeah. but without uh, failure, you cannot measure yeah. your success. Well, you see, I, you people worry, have to have failures. You worry about measuring success all the time. You're always measure, measuring everything. You're measuring success. You give yourself marks out of ten yeah, on a daily basis yeah, yeah, yeah. as to how long you've yeah. gone. Well, that's the act of a madman. No, it's that's not. That's the act of an insecure person. No, it's not. That's the act of somebody who's not happy. No. It is. I don't agree with you at all. Well, I have to say um, that uh, I do agree with me. Um, how about this from uh, FC? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Muirfield won't host the Women's Open this year. That mm. gives Porky's housekeeper a few extra for days to dispose of chocolate boxes. I don't know what he means by that. Okay. Uh, Robbie says, how about that lap dancing bar Porky went to? Was that male only? Well, I don't know, because I never went in it. No, right. That's another silly, sexist story that mm. you put around about me. Um, Max says he just landed in Sydney, off to the Lord Nelson for lunch and light bladderation. Is he? Yeah. Excellent. Well done, my son. Do you know son. that place, then? I do. I know it very well. Ah. It is a traditional English pub, mm. and they serve fantastic fish and chips. Right. It's a white-painted so building. all the way to Sydney to have fish and chips. I would, yeah. It's, a, white, it's a white-painted building with a blue, uh, blue-painted blue windows ah. and roof. OK. It's lovely. Becky says it's not about women's sport being a lower quality than men's, but producing the best quality competitions for women. Yeah. It's, yeah, a, well, well, it's, it's about, you know, yeah. you're never going to make uh, sport equal for men and for women in any sport, really. No, no. You have a handicapping system in golf so sure. that women can play golf. But there's plenty of men uh, who need a handicapping system as well. The point is yes. is that, you know, if you were to take the best woman professional, the best male professional, yeah. the, the male professional would win every time. Well, that's because physio- physiologically that's he saying. will. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Listen, by the way, I found out something today yeah. which I thought would interest you because you on. like food, right? I do like food. Who doesn't like food? What, what, no, yeah, you like food. Yeah, I do like food, yeah, but you like exotic food. Now, I like uh, good food. I tell you what I found out today, and this this is apropos nothing really, except mm. that I'm fascinated by the country and have been ever since um, the Vietnam War. Right. Vietnam's an amazing country. I'd like to go to Vietnam, actually. Um, 
Do you know? I know. And I, know, I love Vietnamese do, food. Do you know why I found this out? Why? I was reading one of my duck journals. Okay, the latest duck journals. Yeah, the, the latest. Okay. Uh, they have uh, ducks. Of course, they have ducks in uh, Vietnam. I suppose. Yeah. Do you know how many they've got? How many? Twenty-seven uh, percent of the whole of the world duck population yeah. lives in Vietnam. Really? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. How extraordinary. And from there, I thought, wow, that's extraordinary. What else do I know about Vietnam? What else I know about Vietnam is it produces 16% of the world's coffee, mm. second only to Brazil. Right. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. The other, the other thing... I don't think I've ever had Vietnamese coffee. Well, you don't know, do you? I maybe suppose. they don't export a lot of it. Or yeah, maybe they don't it, export it here. Yeah, it could be. Uh, also... It's the world's largest exporter of cashew nuts. Really? It produces one, cashew nuts. Th- one third of all the cashew nuts in the world. I mean cashew nuts. Yeah, but I love cashew nuts, you know. Cashew nuts. Yeah. In, um, <laughs> if I'm in a pub and I have a pint of beer or something like that, what's your yeah. problem? What's well, your problem? cashew nuts. Cashew nuts, that's Not what I said. Cashew nuts. Right, cashew saying. nuts, right. If I'm in a pub and I have a pint of beer, you know that yeah. there is a chemical reaction between beer and salt. So I always try to have something salty with my yeah. beer. I thought you had salted peanuts. I do like salted peanuts, but well, I don't like... What about like... cashew nuts? Well, cashew nuts are not as fattening. Cashew nuts are a lot uh, less fattening. Are they? There's less calories in them, All right. okay? Well, you've got to worry about that, haven't you? Yeah. Because, I mean, once you've had two portions of fish and chips in a day, you don't want to overdo it on the cashew nuts. I always start with the cashew nuts, actually. Really? Um, uh, have you yeah. seen the time, by the way? Uh, did you know that... Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, police in Vietnam are banned from talking... On duty, right. smoking on duty, uh-huh. putting their hands in their pockets, or right. wearing or, or wearing black sunglasses on yeah. duty. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. But that's quite, it seems like quite a good rule. Well, you, I, I, I think it's Vietnam, I would have thought, is one of those places where you might see police officers in sunglasses. Yes. You might even see one of them uh, where it's smoking a cigarette because smoking in a place like Vietnam yeah. is not as kind of you know banned as it is here. Yeah, and, and look at this amazing fact here. Uh, the time. Yeah, don't worry about this, because this is so interesting. Right. In Vietnam, there are 2 million cars uh-huh. and 37 million motorbikes. Yes, there are a lot They're of amazing. motorcycles there. Yeah. Amazing. A lot of motorcycles And the favourite food is Tiet Can, a sort of soup made from duck blood. Duck blood. You'd like that, wouldn't duck you? Duck blood soup. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't had any Vietnamese food I, had, I didn't like. Well, they got the, they got, I've never had duck blood soup. They've got a third of all the ducks <laughs> in the world, so it's not surprising they use the duck's blood for soup. That's not surprising at all. Steve says this, looking at Porky's outfit at the tram shed in Cardiff, he doesn't yeah. like the finest of clothes. What? Hashtag plank. What? This is talk sport. <laughs> Talk sport, we are the two mics. Porky quiz time coming up a little bit later on in the show. Quizzes about pirates, of course. Yep. Uh, then there's lots of uh, uh, podcast stuff coming out over the course of the weekend. Yes. This is an interesting one out of the blue. I'll tell you what, okay. I'm quite surprised at the amount of sexist uh, tweets and texts we're getting from right. people, which I'm not going to read out just because they're so Neanderthal, yes. most of them, that I'm not even going to bother going there. Good. Uh, but how about this one, uh, which is uh, directed at you about Manchester United? It's a bizarre story on the back Ooh. of the sun this morning. Ooh. What happened to Porky's conspiracy theory that Gary Neville would become Manchester United manager? Yes. Says Nick. Well, I didn't. So, I'm not sure that was your conspiracy No, I, I said one of these days I think he will f- be a huge part my, of Manchester United, I right? I think it was my conspiracy theory. Might have been theory, yours. Because I, was, I, was, I think yeah. I was suggesting when mm. he first went down to Valencia yes. uh, that he was going to get hooked up with the, the businessman that he's in business with. Who might Mr. buy Lin. Manchester United. Yeah, and he might buy Manchester yeah. United. He might install yeah. Gary Neville as a manager. But exactly. That's, that's obviously not what, what's going to happen in the short well, term. Well, I think we both made it clear we weren't expecting him to be the next manager of Manchester United. No. And actually, I went further to say, do you know what? I think Gary Neville might have a role in running Manchester United, but it might not necessarily be as manager. Yes, what you mean I, in from commercial Yeah, capacity. exactly. I think he's very good at, you know, uh, putting things together. He mm. runs, you know, property empires and all that kind of stuff, you yeah. know, uh, property development and, right. and all hotels and all that kind of stuff. So right. I just thought he could. But what are you making this story in the back of the sun by Neil Custis, who yes. you've always said is generally quite close to the oh, truth definitely. when it comes to Manchester United. Yeah. He is, of course, the fat man, yeah. uh, as labelled by LVG. Yes. They've got a headline that says, Upstairs, downstairs, LVG set to take executive role... Joe said to step in as manager. Yeah. We're suggesting that he's, uh, LVG is going to be the um, uh, the sort of uh, uh, director of football. Yeah. I can't see the two of them working together well, in that way, can you? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, Neil Ashton, who was on the show preceding this the one, Sports right? Bar, yes. Sports Bar, that's right. And he, uh, Neil explained, actually, when they had a look at this story, that um, there have been pretty graphic examples in the past of mm. LVG and Jose being 
close. I mean, their, their careers have clashed in the past. Jose has been subordinate to uh, LVG during LVG's sort of you know prime years in European competitions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, whether or not that would extend to an understanding for them to work together at Manchester United in, yeah. in, a, in a combination of director of football and, and, and coach or manager, I can't see that. And I can only think that if it's going to happen, because uh, generally speaking, well, always, Neil Custis has always got um, info on what's happening inside uh, Old Trafford. Yeah. It might just be a ruse to... Uh, for LVG to see out his three-year contract without any nasty business about him, you know, being sacked or having to accept a payoff, and he might have a role there in some other form. I don't know. Yeah, I don't but, know. But you can't. Re- I mean, I don't think Jose Mourinho has worked at any club where he's had some guy above him as director of football. Well, I think at Real Madrid there was a problem with the sort of El Presidente and well, his yeah, mates because and all that kind of stuff. He's, wasn't he's it? a yeah. sort of special case, isn't he? Yeah, he gets yeah, involved sure. in all kinds of things. But sure. I guess it's not just sure. about. I mean, I suppose he might have been at places in Europe where you yeah. know, he wasn't re- ultimately responsible for all the funny uh, enough, uh, the transfers and all funny that. Funny enough, talking about El Presidente and all mm. that, I read the first um, excerpt from Carlo Ancelotti's book. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you know he's just uh, no not who am I talking about here not Carl Ancelotti who's just packed up at Chelsea. Um, uh, Gus oh, Hiddink. you mean Gus Hiddink? Gus Hiddink. Yeah, Gus yeah. Hiddink. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. sorry, Gus Hiddink. Now he was at Real Madrid, right? Yes. And um, am I talking about the right guy here? I don't know. Well, yeah, Gus Hiddink was, yeah, was at yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, or is it Carlo Ancelotti? I think it's Carlo well, Ancelotti. Carlo Ancelotti was at Real Madrid. Yeah, he was at Real Madrid. And he's now going to be a bit Bayern Munich. Uh, yes, I think it's Carlo Ancelotti, but I will find out. Are you I will sure? find out. Yeah, I'll, I'll refer... I don't think Gus Hiddink was at Real Madrid. No, I don't think he was. I, I don't think he was. You're absolutely right. So let's let's call it Carlo Ancelotti. Let's assume okay? it's Carlo Ancelotti. And uh, what he says in this in this uh, this chapter that I've read mm. is that one day he gets a call to uh, go and see El Presidente. Right. He goes to see El Presidente and he says, Gareth Bale's not happy with you. Yeah. And, and he says... Oh, I tell you what, he was at Real Madrid in 98 to 99. Who was? Uh, Gus Hiddink. Right, I think it's Gus Hiddink then. I think yeah. it's Gus Hiddink. I'm, talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, yeah. I'll find out. Well, he's definitely the outgoing Chelsea manager. He's definitely the outgoing Chelsea manager, so I think it is Gus Hiddink, OK? Mm, okay. So, so he gets called up to see El Presidente and El yeah. Presidente says... Uh, Gareth ba- it was Gareth Bale's first season, I think. Yeah. He said... Um, so I don't know if... Uh, well, that can't be right. No, it can't be. So, so he says... It must um, be Carlo Ancelotti. It must be Carlo Ancelotti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so he says, um, he says uh, Gareth Bale's not happy with you and he's, he's our new star player. Yeah. So, so either Carl Ancelotti or Gus Hiddink, depending on who yeah, we're talking I'm about. I'm pretty sure it must be Ancelotti. Yeah, 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 I think it must be. I'll find out. I'll see definitely. if he's got a book coming out. No, I'll find that out definitely, don't worry. Right. Uh, Right, Ancelotti signed Bale, right. right? So it's Carlo Ancelotti, OK? okay. So, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you because this will be your yeah. last chance. No, 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 no. It's, right. it's, def- it's definitely Carlo Ancelotti. OK. So, so uh, Carlo Ancelotti, who's actually signed Gareth Bale, by the right. way, uh, he says, what, what do you mean Gareth Bale's unhappy with me? I see him in the dressing room every day with no. training and all that. He yeah. says, yeah, well, I've had his uh, agent on the phone and he, you know, he, doesn't think, he thinks you're playing him out of position and all that kind of stuff. Right. So he says, well, that's ludicrous. He, he, he said, I, I don't know why he's told you this, I don't know why he's moaning. He's never said anything like that to me. Here, are. I've got a, I've got a, a reference. Yeah, I've got it here. It's his new it, book, it, Carlo Ancelotti. It is Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah. Carlo Ancelotti. It's definitely not Gus Hiddink. It's not Gus Hiddink. It's <laughs> Carlo Ancelotti. So, um, so he said uh, Bale's agent had been saying things, and um, Jonathan Barnett. Uh, hey? Jonathan, Jonathan Barnett. Barnett. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and uh, he, he was telling the president that Bale was unhappy in his position. He's, mm. He'd been played out of position. Yeah. So El Presidente said to Carlo Ancelotti, "You've got to change the structure of the team mm. and put Bale in a better position." Right. And Ancelotti I think we said, "We knew this, didn't we? Did we not hear well, this before?" Well, it's in his book anyway. Yeah. And and he said. I can't do that. He said, to do that, I'd have to then change the position of every player in the team. Mm. And uh, El Presidente said, well, you've got to do something because he's not happy and, you know, I don't like unhappy players. And in, in the end, in the end, Angelotti just said, uh, I told the President that I would speak with Bale myself the next day, which he did after training. Mm. I said, Gareth, uh, I know that your agent has spoke to the President. Why on earth didn't you come and speak to me about what you want? Mm. And he said, oh, OK, I'll do that next time. Is there a problem? And he said, well, of course there's a problem. I don't want to hear third-hand that you've got uh, um, issues. And uh, Gareth Gale apparently said he'd talked to other players in the dressing room right. who said, no, no, you don't talk directly to your coach mm. and to your manager. Yeah. You get your agent to speak to our president. That's yeah. the way we do it round here. Ah, okay. And Cole Ancelotti said that was a very clear indication of the way the balance of power copes at these sort of clubs, you know. Yes, uh, I was clear with him. I said to Gareth, I said, Gareth, next time... Come and tell me, he says, I'm not going to be very happy if I keep getting some of the president of his office because you're whinging about something that I control. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Mm, Thank yeah. you. I'm glad we cleared all that up. Exactly. Uh, this is Talk yeah. Sport. Yeah. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio.
Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up in the next hour. We go over to China. We're going to get some lowdown and some info on the new uh, um, a man that's running Aston Villa. The guy China that's just bought them. on my mind. Yeah, I don't really do any singing. And uh, also, that we should to do. Power, uh, by the way. Uh, to Pow, was it yeah. indeed? Yeah. yeah. They were a band that kind of passed me by because I wasn't here when they were. Uh, they only ever had one hit. Yeah. They had a, a lady singer called Carol Decker. Uh huh. And she was wasn't like. China in my hand, wasn't it? China. What? Wasn't it in my hand? Oh, was it? I thought it was, I thought it was on, on my mind. mind no. Uh, and she was. No, having... You were always on my mind. That was Elvis. Oh yeah, she was. Ha- yeah, I knew that. Yeah, she was having a relationship with uh, one of the guitarist guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Do you yeah. know what I saw uh, yesterday? Actually, I meant what? to tell you about this. I got a very bizarre invitation with one of our favourite restaurants, Joe Allen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're hosting yeah. a show uh, with uh, <laughs> the man who should not be named. <laughs> no. Right? But here's no. what you get: you pay fifty pounds, right? Yeah. What you get, for? You get a free burger and fries. Right. I hope they're not McCain fries. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, or 15% off any a la carte selection, a complimentary glass of champagne, yes, uh, and a free copy of uh, The Man Who Must Not Be Named's book. No. Well, he's Signed. got a new book out. I think he's got an old book out. Oh, well, what's, what's he write books about? He's not a chef himself. He's a food critic. Yeah, so what's he write books about? Yeah, well, we don't want to talk about him too much. No, we don't. Is it, it was kind they... of surprising he paid 50 quid. Are these, like... Uh, there's a Q&A as well. Uh, is it? Oh, I see. What, well, well, he sits somebody there should ask people... him, uh, Somebody should definitely go there and ask him, uh, what did you think of the price of chips at the Ritz? Yeah, exactly. Shouldn't they? Or what are the best I mean, chips you know, you've ever had? In fact, I might even pay somebody 50 quid to go and do it. Who are your favourite uh, radio presenters? Who are your favourite radio presenters yeah. on Talk Sport? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever fallen out with anybody that's interviewed you? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear the sound of knuckles dragging? Yes, that's Anything right. like that? Yeah, Any sort of question like that would be quite yeah. good. Why don't you anyway. get your hair cut? Yeah, mm. anything like that. Yes. Uh, but anyway, uh, also, um, of course, we've got to talk a little bit about the FA Cup final coming up in yeah. the next hour or so. Uh, I've got lots of uh, tweets here. Johnny says, can't walk the plank uh, when you are a plank. Uh, which I think is referring to uh, what I said earlier about yes. the uh, uh, the piracy quiz. Uh, D says, just remember, fortune favours the brave. Yes. Stay lucky. Yes. Um, and Stuart's quoting me saying, best quote of the night so far, I have to say, I do agree with me, which I did say. You said, I do agree with me, do I you? do, yeah, okay. I agree with myself, you know, because sometimes it's the only person in the room that I can, well, can I agree with. I say, if you don't, nobody else will. Uh, and Steve says, duck journals, Porky is quackers. <laughs> oh, I like that, um, thank you very much. Matt says, maybe you can buy cashew nuts in the strip club Porky visited to apparently watch some football. We'll Ooh. find out more about that later. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. I'm quite excited, of course, uh, this morning, because I'm off to New York. Uh, you a certainly are. A few hours from now. At the end of this but show. But unfortunately, I'm not actually going to New York. I'm going to bypass New York, because I'm going to go yeah. to see my family who are outside of the city. Where are you landing? Uh, well, I'm, I'm flying into Newark, uh, ah, actually, yeah. in New Jersey, because yeah. I've got to go on a train. Yes. Uh, so my journey will be long and tedious, I And suspect. how long is the train journey? Uh, a couple of hours. Oh, that's not far. That's not bad. Well, it's not. Well, it's not bad unless you've just come off a plane for seven hours. Yes, yeah, so that's true. You Are know. you flying cattle class? Uh, I am at the moment. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm hopeful that maybe somebody, that's uh, a may, somebody yeah. may uh, interject. Yeah. Well, on I my hope behalf. so. If you need any help in that score, let me know. Well, I, I, I do. Yeah. Which airline well, what are, you are you flying? Going to do? I'm going to go on BA. You on BA, right? Okay. Who are you going to talk to? Well, you know, I may be able to. Uh, you know, maybe able to talk to what, oil the wheels of corruption. Maybe, maybe. We no, shall no, see. No, not corruption. Enhan- enhancement. Enhancement. Enhancements. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, D says this: Vietnam has got twenty-seven percent of the world's duck population. Mm. Soon to be twelve percent when Porky comes to save them. Yeah, that's a bit harsh, isn't mm. it? Um, now then, I tell you what we were talking about. What um, were we talking about? And what we should be talking about? I've got some new information Have you? on Mother Russia. Have you? Yes. What well, from your handlers? Well, not from my handlers, no, but, uh, you know, I, I keep an eye on, on papers published by the Institute of Foreign Affairs. Do you? OK. Really? Yeah. And it looks like, it looks like, mm. I mean, tonight's show is going to be a bit philosophical because I'm in a philosophical mood. You've been be quite philosophical yeah, uh, yeah. all week, Yeah, I, I think say. so. Yeah, OK. And I, I think, you're, like, in some way, yes. you'll go through some kind of change. Mm, mm. I don't know why. I what? haven't got to the bottom of it yet, but I plan to. Now then, uh, what Russia will pursue in the mm. next decade yeah. is Eurasianism. Eurasianism. Yeah. What's that? It's um, it's restoring the influence of the Russian Empire mm. over non-Russian peoples. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, you mo- mean expansionism? You mean? Well, the culture of the Mongol-dominated steppes, yeah. which stretches into Mongolia, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Uh, was first mooted um, among sort of white Russian emigres. Yeah. Now, when I say white Russians, I'm not talking about the colour of their skin. I'm no, talking no, about no, the yeah. revolution, the white and who, red. That's well, right. Well, there was the white Russians were the, the, were the, the sort of the czar people, weren't they? Yeah, the ones who were cast out, so yes. to speak. You know what I mean? Czar Nicholas. That's right. And then, of course, we had the period, as illustrated by the poet Alexander Bloch, 
Uh, it's a bit of an unfortunate name, really, isn't Alexander it? Alexander Block. Yeah, the Block. Yeah, you know. a writer's Block. Yeah, it, well, no, he was he was a poet. Was he Russian? He was Russian. Was he? Okay. He was Russian, and he um, illustrated the resentful gist of the rejection of the Romano-German civilization, what? which sort of emerged in 1918 following the Russian Revolution. Right, okay. You see what I mean? It doesn't sound so much philosophical as historical. No, 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 no. What are you going no. on about? Now, for much of the uh, Russian period, yeah. those who espoused these views of Eurasianism, right, uh-huh. were either shot or sent to the gulags, right? Yeah. But ne- and, uh, and, in fact, um, one another poet who illustrated mm. a lot of the thinking yeah. on this particular philosophical subject yeah. was um, Akhmatova Lev Gumilev. Um, right. OK? Yeah, I've never yeah. heard of him yeah. or her. Yeah. Uh, he was around. He was around in the early 1920s. Yeah. Um, and he injured his leg with an axe. Did he? While he was cutting a tree down in prison. That's very. But, uh, <laughs> why was he cutting a tree down in prison? Well, that was what his was job. A tree doing growing in the middle of a prison. No, they, they, the prisoners had to cut trees down to uh, get timber. Right. To well, send. So while he was in prison, he yes. was out cutting trees. Yes, down, that's which right. Is yeah, really a better yeah. way of describing. Yeah, it. that's right. Yeah. And he hit himself on the leg with an axe. He did. He became semi-delirious, right? Delirious. Yeah, semi-delirious. Delirious. Yeah. But he then had mm. what is known now as the Eureka moment. Oh, yeah. And he decided to um, mould Eurasianism with passionarity. What? Passionarity. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's the interpretation of a Russian been, been word. taking magic mushrooms. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? No. Uh, passionarity yeah. um, is an Arabian idea, which he'd come across, right? Mm, yeah. And the Arabian word for it, which has now been adapted into the Russian dialogue, is asabiyaya. And asabiyaya. Yeah, asabiyaya. Um, asabiyaya Tore. No, no, is is passionatory, and in in translation terms, it's a sort of national, irrational impulse. A um, a martial spirit of self sacrifice that bonds displaced peoples together. Right. Okay. Do you understand? No. Right. Okay. No, I've already switched off. What do you mean? Why? Well, I'm not taking any of this in. Why? Because it's complete boulder dash. No, it's not. It's it is. not absolute rubbish. From, from that, from that, yeah. Gumilev wrote the history of the steppe tribes of Eurasia, uh-huh. and that was a coming together of the Huns and yeah. the Mongols. Okay. okay? Right. Yeah. Who came together? You get right? any, Where are we going with this? Well, I'm, tell- I'm, I'm telling you about the new th- wave of thinking in Russia, and right. people are interested in this. Well, does it mean they're going to start invading other countries, is what I want to know? No, That's the only no, question no, I would have. No, no, This has, produ- uh, has produced a grand narrative and a cyclical one. It's all coming round again. So every few hundred years, yeah. the nomads on the steps, right? Are they still nomads on the steps? Yeah, they are, and they still ride horses. Really? And they go galloping around off the steps, right, right and plunder the, uh, the kingdoms on their borders. Right of either Europe or Asia, but then then they just disappear again. Mm. Nobody knows where they go for really? a, a couple of years, and they come back. Well, at the moment, they're just coming back. And Gumilev has worked this out. Well, so they've gone somewhere for 200 years. Well, obviously, they've gone somewhere yeah. to die, then. No, no, no. Now, the thing is, what Gumilev is now writing about is the benevolent hand of Russian imperialism, oh, yeah. bringing the Soviet peoples into unison. So is this just more PR for how great the Russians are? What do you mean? Yeah, well, this is what it sounds like. The no. benevolent hand of Russian imperialism. No, no, tell no. That, tell that to the people in Yugoslavia. No. Or, and, in, and, or indeed and, Hungary. No, no, no. And to bring it right up to date, mm. right, uh, Mr Putin has now taken on Eurasianism, OK, which I've described to you what that's all about. Mr Putin. Mr Putin. Yeah. Vladimir. Vladimir. And, Vladimir. And um, he has told his people it is a project for the preservation of identity of peoples of historical Eurasia in the new century, in the new world, combined with passionarity. Eura- Sorry, what are you what are you going on about? I'm telling you what's going to no, happen. I'll just go and make some toast. No, this is one of the world's biggest countries. Everybody's fascinated by no, what's going to happen next, and I know. No. Right. Well, everybody knows what's going to happen next. They're going to have another election. No. Nope. Vladimir Putin's going to be re-elected, nope. and he might be president, or he might be prime minister. Nobody's really quite sure. He's going to continue to uh, nope. push the uh, Russian agenda around the world. No, no. And he's going to continue to sort of stick two fingers up to America. No, no. That's what's going to happen. No. In you a late- nutshell. Eurasian integration yeah. combined with passionarity, right? Uh, that w- what we'll have to do is it will cre- open up a chance then for the former Soviet Union, which no longer exists since the fall of the Berlin Wall, okay, right. to become 
an independent centre of global development. Rather, Have you read this from the script no, from Russia today? No, 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 no. Rather than a periphery state, yeah. periphery state uh-huh. um, of Europe or Asia, it's an intellectually challenging mm. um, uh, assault on. <laughs> what, what's the problem? This is ridiculous. Well, I'm not going to tell you anymore about that. Uh, Porky's uh, uh, handlers must be going mad, what? giving all these secrets away. Uh, Philosophical? What's he going on about? No. Take his temperature, MG. No, I'm not going to read you anymore. Sorry. Well, you're but, not going to read anymore. Uh, do you know, sometimes I just think that you just haven't got the uh, the mm. nous or the intelligence to cope with the things that I, I well, reveal. Well, well, I mean, you're supposed to be a journalist, right? That's supposed to be your... your, your sorry, your, there's your... no suppose about it. Well, I, have a, I have a track you, record of right. immense success okay, in that well, one profession. Of the, one of the reasons that, that the journals yes. that you always read yeah, do not yeah. sell in vast quantities is because yeah. nobody can understand them, right? So what your well, job is? Them. What your job is mm. is, to, is to is to define them, uh, is mm. to is to melt them down, distill them, if you like. Well, I've done that into what is normally uh, a sort of conversation that people can understand. Yeah, I've just. I, done... I would I would say there is no one who listens to any of that who knows what on earth you're talking about. Of course they do. Uh, you're you're no the idea. only one who couldn't follow it because no. you're so dismissive. Well, of, Glenn Arnold of new just ideas. said I should take your temperature. What? Nobody knows what you're going on about. No, of course they do. Of you're course they some do. kind of episode. No, 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 no. You are. You're mad. You're, you're mad. having some kind of episode. I thought that was going on. Do you know what? People will be walking around in all, uh, all right, corners... Well, can, you, can you sum up what you've just said in the last ten minutes? In all corners in of the world seconds. now, and they'll feel refreshed that they know what Russian foreign policy is going to be in the future, because I've, uh, I've just explained it all. Roy says he was just dozing off what? when MG said he'd switched off. Eh? Hashtag boring plank. Oh, I see. I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm, going, I'm not, not going to do it anymore. I don't, know why, I don't know why I bother sometimes, frankly. <laughs> huh? I don't know why you bother either. What? This is Talk Sport. The Two Mics, simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. This is Talk Sport. Uh, you can uh, switch back your radio now because uh, the Russian, uh, what is it, party political broadcast on behalf of the Putin party uh, has so. now ended. Uh, so. Charlton mm. Kev says uh, on the text, 81089, uh, I've picked the wrong night to quit Valium. Cheers, Porky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Neighbours at the off. door, says uh, yeah. Mick. Neighbours at the door complaining about the boredom of the Porky Blank. Oh, yeah. Uh, he must be losing it. Andy and Falkirk, has Mike finished? Can I turn the radio back on now? Uh, John from Durham, what the hell is Porky on about? Yeah. Uh, and Alan says, uh, <laughs> I was thinking I'd enter the twilight zone. Mm. This is that long-winded tripe from Porky. Well, you see, so there you are. You see, that's, uh, now, that's just a, a small sample of the audience who didn't quite gather uh, the drift of my revelation about Russian foreign policy. But the rest, the millions of others who all liked it, uh, yeah. you know, will, will appreciate it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Now, uh, as ever, we have to choose uh, our listography for the night. Yes. Uh, we've been doing this now for a couple of weeks, or maybe three. Is it three yes. weeks since it closed? Um, I think it may be two weeks since the, the new day closed. Yes. Uh, so I've got a few suggestions for you here. Right. Uh, Jacob says, uh, how about your three favourite journeys or your three biggest wastes of time? Uh, not including certain interviews. Sorry, what was that again? So you can have your three favourite journeys, right, yeah. or your three favourite inter- uh, three favourite wastes of time. Right. Uh, you can also have uh, three jobs you would never do under any circumstances. Right. From Stephen, he says, i.e., traffic warden or Liverpool manager. Right. It seems a bit harsh. Yeah. Uh, three things you would like to be remembered for. Yes. Uh, but that doesn't count being a seeker of truth and justice. Right. Uh, James says, which of your colleagues were the three biggest bladder raters in Fleet Street? Right. Uh, Rich is asking for three top job interview tips. Okay. Uh, Which one do you fancy? I quite like um, uh, the three favourite journeys. Okay, yeah, I'm with that. that. Should we do that? Yeah, let's do we that. Could, we could do that. We've got to talk to our man down in China. Yep, uh, uh, whose name is China Paul, Paul on J- my mind. It's not China on my mind. It's China in my hand. China in my hand. Yes, uh, yeah. Paul James, who's the host of Radio China. We're oh, be great! To him. That's great. Good. Uh, you know, I heard actually the other yeah. day yeah. somebody tweeted out for a, a guy that I know who works in Hong Kong. Yes. Saying there's a bit of a crackdown going on in China. Yeah. Uh, for on free speech. Yes. It's similar to Russia, funnily enough. Well, yeah. And they're shutting down all these bookshops that used to be in Hong Kong. Well, uh, where you could go and buy relatively sort of uh, free-thinking yeah. type books on the Chinese. Yeah. Political culture. That's right, yeah. And now they're shutting down all the bookshops. Well, funny enough, we had a conversation a couple of months ago in which mm. we said, isn't it strange that when we handed Hong Kong over to China, yeah. the rest of China went like Hong Kong instead of Hong Kong going like China, you mm. know, in the communist regime and all that. Right. But you're absolutely right. I'm receiving reports that that is now being um, roped in quite severely. Yes, I think it is. I.e., the amount of liberal thinking. I to The amount of liberal thinking in China, yeah. Mm. No. Now, uh, yes. as I'm going off to America, uh, I've got a question for you. Have you ever had root yes. beer? 
Root beer. Yeah. Have you ever had that? I had it the first time I went to America I'm when sure I was 15. I I'm sure I have. When I was 15, I went on a camping what is, trip. What is root beer? Well, it's actually a soft drink. Yes. But it's one of the most disgusting things I've ever tasted in my life. It's kind of fizzy. Yeah. Uh, it tastes brown, if you know mm. what I mean. Oh, yeah. I don't, you know how brown is a colour and it doesn't have a taste, but it tastes brown. And you drink it. tastes it. like gravy? Well, it sort of tastes... I don't know. It tastes like nothing else in the world. Right. But they now make an alcoholic version of it, right? Which I've never oh, tried. Oh, I see. When you were 15, you were, you were drinking it, but it wasn't no. alcoholic. Well, no, because when I, when I was out there, I was 15, and I, I I'd had some as I thought mm, it might be mm, beer, but mm. it was actually... It was not beer, and it was not alcoholic. But they mm. now make some alcoholic root beer. Right. And, and there's a restaurant out in Nevada uh, that's apparently having to retrain their staff because they gave it to an 8-year-old. Yes. And they gave an 8-year-old alcoholic Ooh. root beer. Uh, and he wasn't very well. Well, I'm not surprised. I've had a bottle of, and I think I've put a picture out of, a alcoholic dandelion and burdock. Oh, have you? Yes. Yes. And, See, and you quite like all that dandelion and burdock, don't well, you? Well, I do, but what I don't... What does that taste like? Dandelion and burdock? Yeah. It tastes like uh, a kind of medicine. Does it? It tastes like the sort of thing that um, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show might have sold in oh, the yeah. 1900s, you know what I mean? Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show? Yeah. What, you mean the band? Yeah. Well, they weren't in the 1900s. No, I know, but they gave that impression, didn't they? That's what they were named after. They were named after a 19th century doctor, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show. Really? Yes, yes, I yes. Know yeah. that. Oh, they were, yeah, yeah. Their lead they were singer. They're big in the 1970s, though. Yeah, their, their lead singer had a patch over his eye. He did. You remember? Was it a real patch, or was it just a. a no, it was effect? a real patch, and he had a cowboy hat. Julia's mother said... Sylvia's mother. Sylvia's mother. Sylvia's mother yeah. Do you know the last said, time you sang that and I said it was banned? Yeah. And I was wrong about that, it turned out, because I got a load of tweets and um, I mixed it up with the cover of The Rolling Stone because their song, The Cover of The Rolling Stone, was the one that was banned, not uh, Sylvia's mother. The cover of what? The cover of The Rolling Stone. You know Rolling Stone magazine? Yes. They sang a song about the cover of The Rolling oh, Stone. Oh, I see, I see. on the cover of The Rolling Stone. I see, and that was banned. And I think it was banned How... because they didn't want to advertise Rolling Stone magazine. How weird is that? I think that's correct. Right, OK. Um, How about this from Anthony in Birmingham? Right. Uh, he says, I've just lost eight minutes of my life on my 20-minute break on a night shift. Yes. Hashtag plank. Why? Why? What, what's his problem? Uh, listening to what you were saying about Russia. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to people on about this sort of thing. Ian in Rossendale says, Mike, I don't know about walking the plank later yeah. in the show. It's yeah. more like the talking plank right now. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? Mm. Now, let me tell you. Um, let me tell you something. I was yeah. going to tell you, uh, we've talked at length on this show about uh, getting a, um, an allotment, haven't we? An allotment? Well, yeah. you've said you were going to get one. Yeah. I uh, haven't. I, well, I would never want an allotment. Well, I found, um, I found uh, some very good news, and that is that gardening may soon be de- uh, prescribed on the NHS. The, the, the benefits of gardening are so enormous for, in every sort of way. First of all, you're out in the fresh air. Well, that's all right if you've got a garden. Yeah, well, you can get a lot of well, garden. I have. I've got a roof got a, garden. Yeah, you've got a re- no, you've got four square feet, basically, no, I with, a, with a gnome in it, a bird bath that's broken, yeah. and a chair. The bird bath has been repaired. Oh, has it? Yeah, and I've got... What's the news on the bird bath? Uh, the birds properly coming in now and, and well, actually eating, drinking the water. Do you know what? It's quite interesting. They're eating the food in the bird pecker thing. You know what I mean? Oh, the thing that hangs up. Yes, yeah. that's right. The all, balls. Yeah, almost all. Yeah, that's right. Almost all of it. Two of those big balls have gone. The size yeah. of tennis balls. Right. The third one's nearly gone. Okay. Now, the amazing thing is, mm. although I look out of the window four times a day. Four times a day. Yeah, yeah. How do you know it's four times a day? Well, about four times a day, you know. Well, oh, you mean onto the onto the uh, the actual roof garden? Yes, that's right. Yes. Why four times a day? To because I'm, I'm desperate to see a bird perched on yeah. the edge of my bird bath. Right. And I haven't yet seen one. Oh, OK. Despite the fact I've had it for a month now, right? Why don't you set yourself up a sort of a desk arrangement so that whenever a bird comes in, you could then see it coming in? Huh? Instead, so you wouldn't have to look out four times a day on the off chance. You could actually see the bird coming, is what I'm saying. I look out the window because that's where the bird bath is, in the roof garden. No, no, I know that, but you what can't... What sort of desk are you talking about? Well, I'm saying if you had a desk that faced the window... Then you could work, and then it would catch your eye when a bird came in, and then you wouldn't have to keep trying to go delivery to look there. Well, no, the bird bath is below the level of the window, oh, so I still have to get up and look down. Oh, right. See what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But anyway, anyway, you put a mirror up. It's getting a bit too technical. This anyway. So I, <laughs> I, I look out the window four times a day because I, I wish to see. Right. Uh, I want to see a bird perched on the edge of my bird bath, yeah. and I haven't no, so far. No, not unnaturally. Now, amazingly, mm. the water goes down quite rapidly. Is it maybe evaporating? Well, it must be. It must be because because nobody's drinking it. That's for sure, right? Except the well, only. The except only... you say that. I mean, if mm. you're only looking out randomly, yes. yes. I mean, it could be that every time you look back, the bird comes, takes the water, and disappears. I'm sure it would have coincided me looking out and a bird landing there by now because I, I don't, don't think move. So. I'm very still, so yeah. I don't frighten the birds. Yeah. Now then, what? But the other day, guess what? I saw a magpie mm. perched on the rail above the bird yeah, bath. They're a big nuisance magpies. Are they? Yeah. So it's perched on the rail above the bird yeah. bath. So they're I think like they're sort of rodents of I, the bird world. Well, I think it was thinking about having a drink or something yeah. like that. 
And then, and it didn't, it flew off, but then, much later, mm. I spotted a tiny little bird... Yeah. Very colourful. Yeah. I mean, tiny, like a sparrow, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, well, that's a sparrow size. Yeah, that's right. But what colour? Well, this is the thing. It was multicoloured, mm. but there was gold in its uh, in its feathers. So I went and looked well, when it you up. Say, like, what sort of colour? Gold, red, yellow. Yeah. Really? It was a multicoloured bird. Right. It was beautiful. So what was it when you looked it up? A golden something. Huh? It was a, go- it was a golden something. A golden... Well, you don't remember? No. After all this? I, I looked it up. I looked it up, and it was called a golden... Like uh, golden peacock? No, 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 you idiot! But, you know something like something like a, a golden head or something like that. Golden you know? head? Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah, because he had a gold I, head. No, well, it had a gold body. But anyway, I looked it up and I, yeah. I found out the bird it was. And I, and, and, well, you didn't, did you? Eh? You didn't find out the bird. It well, was. if it's the one I thought it was, yeah. the good news is yeah. there's only about fifty of them in this country. Why is that good news? Well, because one of them <laughs> is, is around my uh, is my roof news? garden. Well, there's only fifty of them. They're going to die out. No, it means that they're very rare, and I'm going to have a, rare, a visitor from a rare bird in my roof garden, you see. Well, yeah, true. Which I'm pretty excited I'm see about, if I to be can honest. I'm find a picture of it. Yeah. It's golden g- head? Go- oh, it's a golden. Something. Golden it? beak? Golden, golden beak, it could have been. Golden beak? No, it could have been golden beak, yeah. yeah. Could have been golden it doesn't beak. Seem like, yeah. It doesn't seem yeah. very likely. Um, but anyway, listen, getting back to what I was telling you, gardening is ever so good for the, for the Constitution, OK? There's a Chinese restaurant called the Golden Bird. <laughs> What's that? Mile End Road. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't go down the Mile End Road very often. I don't really. Is uh, that where you went to hospital? What? Mile End Road. It was a white chapel, wasn't it? What? You went to hospital at the Mile End Road, didn't you? When you originally were taken in and they discovered that you had cardiomyopathy. No. You told me it was the, the hospital in uh, the East End. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Well, which hospital was it then? The first hospital to diagnose... Yeah, you said you were walking kind of, one day and you were getting more and more breathless yeah, and they took yeah. you to the hospital and I thought it was the hospital no. which is down by Whitechapel Station. No, it wasn't. It was Kingston Hospital in Surrey. Kingston? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. OK. But anyway. All right, I funny enough, that wrong, funny, funny enough, funny enough, I did go to St George's. Now, you know St George's is on the other side of the uh, River Thames to the House of Commons? Um... No, St Thomas's. St Thomas's. That's right, St Thomas's. You're right, St George's is uh, further out. Well, St George's Collies is... A- Wood. Well, I don't know all the hospitals and, Anyway, so St Thomas's. England. So what happened was, right... What earth are you going on? I'm sure you told me you went to the one in Whitechapel. No, I I've never been to the hospital in Whitechapel. You know also. the one I mean, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah, the London Hospital. Yeah, London Hospital. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm sure you told me No, you what happened there. was, what happened was, I went round to see my girlfriend after work. She was, believe it or not, a secretary at the Express, right? Amazing. And <laughs> I'd, I'd been out on a job all day, and increasingly yeah. I'd thought to myself, why is my arm hurting underneath right. my, you know, underneath my, uh, well, my I arm? I thought you were working here, though. No, no. I didn't realise it happened while you were working there. What? That your heart started failing. This is not about my heart. Oh. I'm telling you why I went to St Thomas's Hospital. Oh. Right? All right. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Blimey. It's a great story. Well, because we're out of time already. Yeah, it's a great story. We're going to go to China in a minute. great story. I found a, go- a golden-headed cysticola. That's it. Is that's that it? it? Yeah, that's it. I told you it's golden Also yeah. known as the bright-headed cysticola. Well, there you go, you see. It's a species it's a... of warbler. Warbler. Yeah, it's a warbler. It was. It was warbling. Is that it there? Let me have a look. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Honestly, that that's was it. That was it. I told you it was a golden head. It. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So, from one warbler to another. This Yo. is top sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Don't push to fire dreams of China in your hand. Don't wish to hard because they may come true and you can't help them. You can learn what you might have. And that's to power for you. That's the pal. Yeah, uh, China in your hand. China in your hand, that's right. What was her name? Carol Decker. No, uh, you said it was, yeah. Yeah, she was, yeah. She yeah, was as I say, that, yeah. they kind of passed me by because they were big in this country I think they only had one when hit, I was honestly. away. Yeah. Um, They're still playing, actually, funnily enough. Yeah, I think they are. I think they, they like... I think she is still the lead singer, and I think mm. one other member of the group, and then they've got three or four other people who fill in, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Um, now, we're going to talk to somebody in China in a minute. Uh, we are in a moment. Yeah, <coughs> we're just trying to get a hold good. of him, yeah. Soon we're also going to do our three favourite journeys yes, that's in right. discography, which yes. I think will be quite interesting. That'll be very uh, interesting. And I've also just re- I've tweeted out the picture of that bird uh, that you... Oh, uh, thank you, well you done. Because it's, yeah. uh, it is quite a beautiful-looking bird, It is, I and say. it's in my garden, how about mm. that? Mm. And there's only 50 in this country, so I'm pretty pleased about that, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a porky warbler, I've called it. OK, that's good song. man. Uh, and Muzo has explained why Dr Hook's song was banned, but it's got a, a, a line in it that I can't really read out, uh, which would be uh, uh, probably wrong if I was to read it. Oh, yeah, this um, bird is beautiful, isn't and, it? And uh, uh, Glenn Arnold says, Porky's really lost it tonight, perhaps he's been studying too hard for the <laughs> quiz, yeah, as he sounds like so. Captain Pugwash on acid. Uh, no, I don't, th- I don't oh, think so. Oh, we were so. talking about uh, hallucinogenic drugs the other day. Yes, we were, yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, now, what was I going to say? I was going to say... Oh, you were going to tell me a story about how you ended up at St Thomas's. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, so uh, anyway, uh, now, the young lady I'm talking about lived at the Elephant and Castle, mm. right? On an estate which has now been knocked down. It oh, was yeah. that bad, you know right, what I mean? Okay. And it's been replaced. Did you not feel a bit grubby going to a place like uh, that? Sort of, but I bought her an iron gate for her uh, door. Oh, no, like honest. the one you've got? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. The old drug dealer's crack house den sort scenario. Of, sort of type thing, yeah. yeah. But uh, And, and some, um, some grills for the windows, yeah. you know what I mean? It, really? It, yeah, it was that bad. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't yeah. like going. You couldn't have parked your car down there, did you? Uh, sometimes I had to, and miraculously, it never got broken into or anything. But mm. anyway, there you go. Uh, now, what I was going to say was so mm. I got there one night, and she said, You're all right. And I said, Why? She said, You look awfully flushed. I mm. said, well, to be honest, I've got this pain in my arm. Yeah. So she had a look. You so know. this must have been quite a long time ago. Oh, it was a long time Back ago. Back in the yeah. sort of 90s, right? Or something. No, it was in the 80s. Oh, the 80s. In the right. mid-80s, yeah. Okay. So, so she, she took my shirt off and there was a huge boil really? on the underneath of my arm. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, actually, it was this one. It was, I'll just remember, because I've still got the scar. Right. So it's this huge boil. What, like the size of a tennis ball? Kind of? S- size of a tennis ball, yeah. literally, you know. Right. And she said, good God. She said, look at this. And I, and I said... And, and how long had that been there, then? Well, it, it had just worked up during the day. I'd right. been out on the road, you know. Right. It was one of them... I was a reporter in those yeah, days, yeah. and it was a doorstep, yeah, and I was yeah. chasing people around or something mm. like that. And in the end, mm. I remember, it's the only time it's ever happened, I had to phone the news desk and yeah. say, look, I'm sorry about this, can I pull out on this? And they said, why? I said, I just feel terribly ill, and yeah. I've got a very sore arm. I said, yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, and as she was a the secretary there... I managed to get through to her and say, right. look, I'm coming around to see you. I've, I've, I've pulled off the job. I don't feel well. Mm. And um, so anyway, she said we, we should but go... Sometimes to... you can get that from something rubbing on it, and if it's really kind of... But that sounds Nothing too big unusual was rubbing. Nothing no. unusual was rubbing. Mm. So, so she said, we've got to go to hospital. And I said, don't be ridiculous. She said, that could burst. Yeah. And, and not burst externally, but burst internally. True, and poison and, you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. And, 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 you know, I don't know whether she'd had experience of it before or something. Mm. And I said... And I didn't want to boiled go to hospital. specialist. I didn't want to go to hospital. Everything's boiled. Because I felt uh, so knackered and, and, and I thought we'd ruin our evening. Right. But anyway, to cut a long story short, right. I went there. A doctor lanced it and it was horrendous. I mean, a, a pint of this no. fluid came out. No, I'm not no. joking. And, and we'll go back to root beer. And dribbled into, into a no. glass bowl. No. And I've still got the mark, the scar, really? where the surgeon cut the, uh, the skin. Yeah. And, and to this day, I've no idea how it flared up. That's yeah. horrendous. Yeah. That's just awful. Uh, right, now, I think we've got Paul James uh, on the phone. Uh, yep. He's uh, over in China. Yep. Uh, he is, of course, with uh, Radio China, I think mm-hmm. it is. I'm right in saying. Uh, Paul, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Yes. Now, uh, we, were, we talk to uh, some colleagues of ours quite often in China, just on, on the off chance that there's uh, the, uh, a couple of, uh, um, sort of pieces of information you can give us on stories, and we'll get to some Hong Kong stories in a minute. But obviously the excitement here at the moment is that there's a new uh, sort of football millionaire in the, uh, uh, in the ether, and that's this guy who's bought Aston Villa, Dr Tony Jia. Is that right? Hello. Hello. He's disappeared. Is, is that... As soon as I mentioned Hong Kong, you see, yes. do you think they cut the line? I don't know. I mean, you, you, you may well be right. Yeah. I don't know. Now, a couple of people have been uh, texting in and saying, basically, mm. the bird you saw was a goldfinch, says Baz in Godstone. Well, that's not a goldfinch, the one that you've just put the picture out of. And Catherine says, golden-headed Sisticola lives in India or Australia. Right. Porky's been on the gin. No. More likely saw a goldfinch. No, no, I don't think so. I think I, th- I, I said to you, I looked it up, and there were only 50 in this country, so yeah. they've probably been blown here by the Saharan winds or something like that. Blown you know here. what I mean? Yeah, well, I, I think could so. look up a goldfinch and see if that looks like the one you saw. Well, this, this is a very colourful one. Yeah. Um, now, are we getting Paul back on the line? Yeah, I think we're going to try to, yeah. It's never right. easy when you... T- I mean, China, despite all of the amazing money that they seem yeah, to have down there, yeah. whenever we talk to anybody down in China, yes. it never goes well. doesn't go well. No. Uh, now, let me see if I can find a goldfish. wonder whether you. somebody's listening, don't you? Well, you do. Mm. Well, as soon as I mm. said Hong Kong, yes. you know, suddenly the line went dead. Yeah, that's very odd, that. Anyway, Isn't that strange? Sure back have here. you ever had that, actually, when you've been on, on sort of jobs elsewhere oh, in God, the world? Yeah. And when you had to actually communicate by telephone, and suddenly oh. you would say the wrong thing, in... and the line would go dead? Well, in Libya... When I was, I went there three times, including the final one when they bombed me. Um, whenever you mentioned key words, not only did the line go dead, but you got a knock on the door from a bloke with a gun. How about that? That's a goldfinch. That looks pretty good, but it's it's not the one I saw. No, no, okay. the one I saw is much more colourful and much more like the original bird that you sent out. Oh, okay. 
So, yeah, you, you get a knock on the door from guys saying, you know, is everything all right in this room? Right. Like, you know, are you spying or yeah, some yeah. of that kind of stuff, you right. know? Because they'd all be listening in. All listening in, all the time. All your phone calls are monitored, you know? Mm. And, and, and the strangest thing was, you used to get calls in the middle of the night yeah. and there was nobody at the other end. Really? And you didn't know who was calling or whether they were checking up on you or anything. You know, right. it was very weird, very yeah. weird, yeah. I once had a, a manager of a hotel come and knock on my door at 2 o'clock in the morning yeah. um, to tell me that if I didn't stop my ex-wife from ringing the hotel and giving abuse to all the people yeah, at the yeah. front desk... Yeah. That I was going to have to leave the hotel. Which country were you in? In Wales. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because I'd gone, I mean, I was down there working on the Welsh Mirror, you know, yes. like you do. Yes. And it was during a particularly sort of a turbulent period in our marriage. Yeah, exactly. Um, and she kept ringing me. Yeah. And, you know, giving me abuse. And so eventually yeah. I just muted the phone. Yeah. So that she couldn't get through to the room anymore. I see. But she then decided to call the front desk. And, and giving them abuse. And just giving them abuse. Go upstairs and knock upstairs, on his door yeah, exactly. and get him down to this phone and, and all that kind and of, of stuff. Like, yeah. In the end, I had to call my sister mm. in America yeah. to say, look, would you mind giving a ring and just saying, look, could you desist here? It's a very because... convoluted way of going about it. Well, because I knew if I rang her, yeah. that wouldn't be the end of it. No, right, so OK. So, you know, and we weren't really speaking to each other at this point, you know, and she was just giving me a lot of abuse. And so, I had, in the end, I got my sister to ring and say, look, this yes. is not really going to be helpful. Exactly. If he gets thrown out of a hotel at two o'clock in the morning uh, yeah. when he's at work. Well, calls in the middle and of the night. And I wasn't with anybody either. It wasn't like, you no. know, I was up to no, up to no ex- good. Ex- for once. Well, maybe for on one, you say night. that. Well, yeah, on no, a rare just, night, I, yeah. I was, I'd, I'd, been, uh, I'd been busy working. Calls, or more to the point, knocks on the door mm. in the middle of the night are very, very worrying. I'll tell you a story about yeah. one in a minute. I think, right. we've, I think we've now got we've Paul, got Paul back. back. Yeah. Hello, Paul, how are you? Hey, fellas, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, technical difficulties as China is, as it yes. is. No, well, I mean, no that's, I mean it's all. interesting you say that, because you would assume, because China is now at the forefront of all technology, technology there's yeah. so much money going through the place and business is booming, you know, why are the communications still so bad? Uh, well, hey, listen, fellas, uh, as, as much as this uh, country is, uh, you know, uh, likes to uh, call itself at the forefront of uh, technology, some mm. days it just ain't, uh, ain't the ways. So. No, of course. Oh, well, OK, well, listen, we haven't got a great deal of time, Paul, so let's talk first of all about this businessman. Uh, what can you tell us about Dr Tony Jia, the guy who's now the owner of Aston Villa Football Club? Quite honestly, not a lot. I mean, this is mm-hmm. a guy who came out of left field. Yeah. Uh, we you know he's 39 years old. He uh, has been... Uh, kicking around for uh, quite a while in uh, like a, a, a consortium of uh, I, I guess uh, companies right. basically he, he runs a hedge fund basically mm. and he went to Oxford he knows football uh, apparently played a little bit uh, though you look at him you go eh, maybe maybe not right. but uh, that being said um, apparently he's, he's got a real uh, chub on for for Aston Villa so mm. they're pretty excited about it yeah, yeah, they really are. Yeah. And I mean, some people have been saying over here that, uh, that there's great backing from the Chinese kind of government, as it were, now for, for China to get more involved, not just in football in China, but in football in the West as well. So does he have sort of the blessing of, uh, of the government with this deal? Well, you got to assume that he does. I mean, there have been reports saying that he's uh, friends with Xi Jinping. I don't know if that's necessarily true, the, mm-hmm. the Chinese president. But that being said, uh, what better way to you know cozy up to uh, the Chinese president than you know buying yourself a football team, even if they are relegated? Nonetheless, why you know it, it, it makes for nice dinner conversation. So, uh, obviously, uh, he's one of a number of guys who've uh, stepped up to the plate. Uh, Wang Jianlin, the guy who owns Wanda, mm. uh, he's a big uh, player. Uh, bought uh, 20% of uh, um, uh, La Liga side um, Sevilla. So, I mean, mm. there, there's all sorts of, uh, you know, guys uh, stepping up to the plate. And so, I guess he's just the latest. Yeah, well, the thing is, Paul, this comes on the back, doesn't it, of a recent announcement coming out of China that they are going to start investing huge sums of money in the game at grassroots level. So, that young kids can start playing it and you can become world champions. Well, they figure they're going to spend the equivalent of about five hundred uh, billion uh, US dollars over the next five years. Five hundred so. billion. Yeah, well, not not necessarily on football per yeah, yeah, se, but yeah. uh, but on but on sports in general. Mm. And so uh, you like a lot of the business guys over here, they're going, "Whoa, I better capitalize on this as quickly as possible." And yeah. so. You get uh, guys like, uh, you know, Tony Shaw and, uh, and, and the other folks, uh, yeah. you know, sort of stepping up to the plate. Whether or not it, it's going to, you know, amount to anything as far as creating Chinese, good Chinese football, that's a bigger question. Sure. But still, it's, it's, it's quite interesting to watch. Sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Right. Just one other thing I wanted to ask you about, just because I, I was following, uh, I follow a guy on Twitter who's a New York Times correspondent in Hong Kong, I think he is, and uh, he had uh, uh, tweeted a picture from the Hong Kong airport of a place where there used to be a bookshop which specialised in sort of Chinese political literature 
literature, which has now been shut down. And his his piece basically said that you know this this uh, this clamp down on on what you might call freedom of speech politically in Hong Kong is becoming quite a problem. Well, it, it certainly is, and I mean everyone in Hong Kong's freaked out about it because mm. uh, under the system, it's supposed to be uh, one country, two systems, as, as it were. So basically, uh, it's the old uh, colonial British. Uh, uh, rule of law sure. uh, up until uh, you know 2049 or whatever uh, and then the, the Chinese are supposed to take over but uh, we, you know you, you guys have heard the reports of these guys you know uh, going in and uh, either going in or picking plucking these guys out who are you know writing bad stuff about the Communist Party and so yeah. no, everyone's freaked out it's, it's a very scary situation right now and people in Hong Kong are a little freaked well you see I don't quite understand this Paul because it seems to me China is a very efficient country financially economically in in terms of growth of the economy, it's very efficient indeed. So why don't people just say, look, sometimes you have to give up a little bit of personal liberty just to make a country work? You know what? In, in the grand scheme of things, that would be the absolute best thing for them. But yeah. this is a system where the, the Communist Party just holds on to power like it's you know, clinging on with with both hands and, sure. and trying not to, you know, uh, you know, fall out of power and anything that uh, subverts that, whether mm. it be democracy or you know, the the quasi uh, that they call it down in Hong Kong, uh, it scares them a little bit, and so yeah. they they get freaked out by it. The only thing I would say to that, Paul, and you're an American, obviously, is that American, Canadian, but whatever. Uh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Well, oh no. Well, it, it, no. No. He's no. Sure it, American. Well, He's a well, Canadian. Well, well, it apply. It applies to Canada as well. I, I take no offense, Welshman. No, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. He is Welsh, actually. So I, you're right. I, no, I have equal admiration for both countries. Um, but what I'm saying is that democracies are great places to live, but decision making in democracies takes so long, it, it clearly impinges upon the efficiency of the country. For instance, we've been talking about uh, building a new um, uh, runway at Heathrow Airport in London for 30 years, and we still haven't made our minds up. When the Chinese want to build an airport, they just tell somebody to build it, and it's built within one year. That, for me, makes it a much more efficient country than, than a democratic country. First off, you should uh, deal with Gatwick before uh, you deal with Heathrow. OK. Uh, and secondly, um, yeah, absolutely, it, it definitely pushes uh, things through. But the question is, do the people really want it to be pushed through? And that's mm. the larger question. Folks down in Hong Kong say, well, no, we want our own voice. People up here in Beijing say, well, you know what? We're your voice. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. This is great talk with you, Paul. We'll try and get a better absolutely, line Paul, next thank time. Thank you very much uh, indeed. We've got a lot more questions yeah, for sorry, you as well. The, uh, no, no, no problem, problem at, all. at all. Great to hear Paul from James you. James there, host of Radio China. Sounds a fascinating place yeah, to work, yeah. though, doesn't it? Well, I think what's interesting there, Mike, is that we were asking him on an open line, yeah. which anybody in the world can hear, yeah. are the Chinese clamping down on free speech? Yeah. And he was very happy to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, he was. So, so that's a contradiction in terms, really, isn't it? Well, up to a point. You know, yeah. we'll find out whether we can get hold of him again, yes. I suppose. That'll be the proof of the pudding. Yeah. But uh, we've got to do listography coming up. Uh, we've got to do lots more as well ahead of the uh, yes. Porky Quiz, uh, which is on Pirates tonight. Yes. This is Talk Sport. The Two Mike. Simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Crazy, but that's how it goes. Millions of people living as hoes. And yeah, but maybe it's not too late to learn how to love. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. We're going to do listography coming up very, very yes. shortly. So prepare yourself to give us three journeys, three of your favourite journeys. OK. Uh, which I guess could be by any mode of transport. Yeah. Uh, Paul in Hockley uh, says this. Birmingham, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Birmingham says, Dr. Jia mm. sounds like a character in a Bond film at best, but more likely to be found in a Mike Myers, Austin yeah. Powers movie. Uh, two yeah. words of warning to Villa, Carson Young. Well, yes. I mean, that was a different kettle of fish altogether, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Carson, Carson Young. Carson Young was involved in all sorts of political mm. uh, allegations, accusations, uh, shenanigans, call it what you want, you know. Um, the one thing that gets me about Villa is that all the board have left now, but the guy who's still there is the new, I think he's chief executive, Steve Hollis, right? Yeah. I am totally uninspired by Mr Hollis, and I'm sorry I have to say that, but every time I see him interviewed, he sounds like an overexcited kid. Mm. He uses his hands, Mike, to speak. So you know a guy who's always uh, gesticulating, all gesticulating the time, yeah. with his hands, yeah. you know, using. Yeah, you know, it like... really annoys me about some of these guys on television yeah, now. Exactly, they've all decided to copy 
you know, who was it? Nick Robinson that sort of first started doing yes, it. Yeah. You know, and there's a new political guy, and he's always waving his arms around. Robert Peston does it, doesn't Peston he? And, does and it. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And this guy, Hollis, he uses his hands like two chopping boards, you see what I mean? To emphasize everything he's saying. Because yeah. it's so important, you know, he's, he's, he's chopping air with his hands, you know. And he talks in riddles. He talks about, you know, the, the brand uh, that we have here, you know, the, you know, protecting the brand, you know, building the brand, and all this kind of stuff. Doesn't seem to know anything about football. For years, I hope I'm not being. Uh, unkind and mean to the man. He lived next to Andy Townsend, our friend. Um, you know, what do you mean? Why, why are you being unkind by his name saying that he lived near Andy Townsend? Uh, because he's a big friend of Andy's oh, I see. and Andy's a friend of mine. So I don't want to feel that I'm being disloyal to anybody or no. anything like that. Well, but, it's a bit late now. But yeah, but I, I just don't, he just doesn't inspire me. And, 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 and is it unfair to say, well, hang on, he put a board of very reputable people together, including the former chairman of the Football Association yes. and including uh, Adrian Bevington yeah. and including quite well, a lot of jumped ship now. They've all pushed off. Yeah. They've all gone. Why have they gone? Uh, you know, well, is that well, a sign I mean, of lack of confidence fair, Well, this something? was before this happened. So I suppose if you were sitting at Aston Villa's office, yes. you would think, you know, this guy's been talking about selling it for years yeah. and he hasn't been able to find a buyer yeah. because for £200 million, nobody was, was sitting no, out there. But I'd have thought that board would have said, right, it's a new dorm, we've got a new owner, let's work with it, yeah. instead of pushing off and saying... Yeah, but, do you yeah. Not, but did they not push off before this guy came on board, is what I'm saying? Well, I didn't think, even I know think, about no, it. I think the deal was underway. Oh, really? Oh, yes, I'm certainly was. You think they didn't like it? Uh, well, I don't know. This is what I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. I don't know. They were told their roles are going to be rearranged mm. or something like that. Who, no, okay. who, who knows? But, right. Well, I'm surprised but you haven't I, uh, you know, ex- ex- used your uh, vast what, what knowledge will, of what these What will people. be interesting mm. will be that, I, you know, China is a new source of limitless amounts of money. How much money will this new guy put in? Yeah. I mean, is it going to be, is it going to be a Manchester City situation? Are no. we talking about bottomless no. pit of he's money not that, here? he's not that wealthy. No, he said 20, 30, 40, 50 yeah, million. Right. That's what I saw him say. Exactly. So 50 he's million not, is not a lot. You're not going to buy a lot of players for that. No, you're not. You're you can buy no. Aston Villa for 60. Now, yeah, exactly. uh, Emma was very upset with you earlier. She says, actually, no, yes. Porky's lanced boil. Now it's too much. Oh, well, I'm sorry and about that. Gaz says, uh, mm. she said, how long have you had that horrible-looking, hideous thing? And the boil replied, about a week. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. The old ones your are the best words. ones. Yeah, now, yeah. Uh, we've got to uh, stop for a moment because right. there's lots going on and we've got to do uh, the listography. Oh, yes. Uh, and we were a little bit mm. running a little bit late with Paul James there due to the uh, mm. difficulties with communication. Yes. Uh, so we'll do listography next. That's uh, we'll fine. get lots of good suggestions from various people where we're doing so now we're doing uh three, three favorite of, journeys of your favorite journeys yeah again like with some of these things you, it's hard to actually come up with three no it's not there's more no, than three it's good so oh yeah there are more than three they don't, they don't have yeah. to be your okay. very very most favorite do you, want okay. to go, do you want to go first uh yeah i'll go first All right. my favorite journey in the world is flying across the atlantic from uh, Heathrow to JFK, uh-huh. which you're doing in a few hours' time. Indeed. But well, it's got to be in a club-class seat, and yeah. I'm not trying to be elitist here, but no, I mean, that, that, that's comfortable. With loads of booze, it's got to be a beautiful day, and you've got to be above the clouds, looking down on fluffy, snowy clouds with bright blue sky above you. Uh-huh. That, is, that is the greatest journey in the world Don't you for like me. it when there's no clouds? Because uh, then there's no turbulence going through them. Uh, well, it, either or, really. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, in a perfect journey, I'd like it broken between cloud below me and yeah. then no cloud, and right. particularly coming into the eastern seaboard. I quite like it at, uh, yeah. in the winter as well. When yes, you, I when do. You, when you hit Canada, I do. Hudson Bay, I do. And then you look down, it's all white. Uh, uh, incredible. If you go on the route which takes you up to the top and down again, yeah. it's fantastic coming mm. down over Canada and seeing the ice flows and all that kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, either that or the other one is... New York to LAX, yeah. daytime, yeah. going across the Grand Canyon. Right. That's spectacular. That is, Absolutely yeah. spectacular. Yeah. So that's my first one. OK. My second favourite journey, believe it or not, mm. is on the high-speed train yeah. up to Liverpool oh, if yeah. I'm going to watch Everton. OK. Because the sense of anticipation coming out of... Um, uh, uh, where is it? Houston. Houston. Yeah. Up to, and it's only charged 15 minutes, and I've usually got a... No, it's not a Sunday. As long as it's not on a Sunday, because it goes wrong. But if it's on a Saturday for a three o'clock kickoff, and I've mm. got a bottle of something on the table, and you know I'm feeling great, and, and you're in first class, no doubt. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you pay for that weekend. You mm. can upgrade yourself and all that kind of stuff. And just a, excuse me, the sheer anticipation, right? Yeah. And I think the third one, if I had to think of all the journeys in the world, is a journey I haven't yet taken. Okay. So I'm going to include this. All right. But I keep reading about marvellous train journeys mm. on these long train journeys, like, for instance, the um, Simpler and Orient Express. Yeah. But there's some much, much longer and better ones, like there's one in South Africa, yeah. and it goes right round the bottom of the Winelands and yeah. it comes back up. But the one I saw the other day... Trans-Siberian Express. Well, Trans-Siberian is one, but, but, but there's a Canadian one that goes through the Rockies, yeah. which is spectacular as right. well. But the one I saw the other day is a three-day journey mm. from Sydney to Perth across the wilds of uh, Central wow. Australia. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I would love that. It's and the not trains much to are see, though, is it? Trains a mile long. Yes, yeah. there are. The, you, you pass uh, herds of camels. Yeah. You know, you camels. Go, yeah, camels. Yeah. yeah. You go through all these um, iron ore, pe- you know, mountains yeah. that I've told you about in the yeah. past, and then you go through vineyards, yeah. and oh, I'd, I'd love to do that. Really? I'd love to do okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Well, my three actually. I mean, I'm not going to yeah. start off with the one. My, the, the drive into Manhattan right. is mine. You yeah. Know, okay. Yeah. About the actual flight. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get in the car. And then you come up just as you're coming into the Midtown Tunnel. I was going to say Midtown and it Tunnel. Rises, yeah. The road rises up, and yeah. you get the first view. Mm. Man, I know it's, I've it's never, spectacular. I've never lost that sort no. of uh, level agree. of excitement. Unfortunately, because I'm not going into JFK, I won't actually mm. see that this time. But that's one yeah. of my great journeys. For yeah. some reason, I've not picked sort of plane and train. I picked car journeys. It's mm-hmm. one of my favourite car journeys. I did this on my honeymoon. Mm. Was driving from Nice to Monaco, right, uh, on the Grand Corniche. Because yeah. okay. you know, there's three roads. Yeah, yeah. And there's the there's the sort of the the, the small Corniche, the middle Corniche, and the Grand yeah. Corniche, yes. which is the higher one up. Yes, and it's just spectacular. The coastline as you drive I've around. I've never done that. And yeah. you feel very, yeah. as you come sort of come into Monaco, yeah. which is this amazing sort of you yes. know, centre, as you know, of, yes. of just ab- absolute kind of yeah. wealth and, and craziness, really. Sure. But wonderful mm. uh, views mm. and everything mm. else. And I'm going to take Europe for my third one, mm. um, uh, which is actually, I'm going to take, I've actually got two and I can't make up my mind. One is in Scotland, right. um, where I once, when I went to uh, stay on the Isle of Skye, right. there's a pass called the Apple Cross Pass, right. which comes all the way down from a place called Torridon, okay. um, down. And mm-hmm. down from Ullapool, mm-hmm. and you and you're on the kind of really outer edges of, of the Scottish Western Highlands, yeah, yeah. and it's spectacularly beautiful. Mm-hmm. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, breathtaking. You can't yeah. believe what you're seeing. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And then if I get allowed to have a fourth one, which I am going to try, yeah. the Amalfi Coast. Um, from yeah, Malfa, Sorrento, yeah, yeah. just down from Naples, you drive on this tiny little coast road right. around rocks and, and yeah. up and down. And, well, there's and not a go, lot of traffic. Does it's, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's, I came round a bend and yeah. I was in a rental car, mm. and it's a very narrow road, and there was yeah. a coach coming the other way. Well, exactly. And if I'd gone round any faster, yeah. I'd have been in the drink. Right. Okay. You know. Um, yeah. But there's a beautiful mm. place called Ravello. Um, which is sort of situated up from the uh, from the from the bottom yeah. of the beach. And you yeah, go sure. past Sorrento, and you go past um, um, what's the other name of the other place? Um, Positano. Well, it's where, it's where rich people get married, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. That so sounds, those, those that are sounds pretty good. So yeah. I mean, we're starting to sound uh, quite civilized. Yeah, here. exactly. There's something yeah. wrong. Yeah. Well, we're doing more investigations into what Mr. Parry's I, I, been I'm, taking. I'm just totally off car journeys these days I, because it involved traffic jams yeah. and my back aches in cars, mm. you know, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So, but I do love when I. Say and I love the train journey. Watch out for the time, though. Yeah, I do also love driving up to Goodison and going up through Cheshire. I okay. come off the M6 and go through Cheshire past right. Chester. Love it. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on, of course. By the way, I've got a bone to pick with you because you sent yeah, out yeah. a what can only be described as a troublemaking tweet yesterday morning. Oh, what was that? Suggesting that the podcast was not up yet yes. and that I had somehow gone on some bladderation trail. That's right. When you full well know yes. that I've actually been recovering uh, all week from that dis- dis- disgusting lurgy that you passed on to oh, me. Oh, really? Have which you? I think I've now finally rid myself mm. of just mm. about. You know, but I'm still yeah, feeling a bit, little bit of coffee. Yeah. But the point is, is that you sent that out at about 9.30 and the podcast had already been up for an hour. As many people well, you, actually you, responded. Yeah, but you hadn't sent me the usual well, message that you do. I hadn't sent it do. to you, no, no. No, I hadn't sent it to you. Yeah, well, you should have done. Well, I hadn't got around to doing that. Well, you should. I should be the first person to receive it, as I'm, you know, partly responsible for the content no, in it. the first okay? person that receives... The people, yeah. people that receive it are those who subscribe to it. Are you telling me you don't even subscribe to your own podcast? Uh, I'm not sure. You're not sure? No. Well, why, why don't you subscribe <laughs> to it? Actually, and I then know. it'll drop into your uh, information device before anybody actually knows that it's there. That's a good thing. I'll get somebody to do that. Yeah, you should do that. Um, now, how about this from Glenn Arnold? says, Listography is great. It's always entertaining and often shows a side to you both that we don't know about. Right. Please keep it in. It's a winner. Well, Emma here sends a very nice one, but I'm not quite sure uh, what the uh, what, what she's um, praising us for. She says, um, utter brilliance and plankton on Valium and bladderated and captivated. Yeah. My guilty about pleasure. Herself. No, my guilty pleasure. Oh, that's her guilty did, pleasure. Did we have a guilty pleasure? We talked about guilty pleasures yesterday. Oh, maybe. So. Oh, I see. I see. So what she's saying is, I think our show is her guilty pleasure. No, maybe so. Oh, well, that's good. Um, well, Thank you very well, much Glenn indeed, Arnold, Emma. That's very kind. Glenn of you. Arnold continues. Porky saying this Hollis bloke at Villa talks in riddles is yeah. hilarious. Porky should listen to himself. Uh, no, 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 no. If you can't understand the philosophy of uh, Russian uh, foreign policy, that's not my fault. Oh, okay? okay. And Ian's asking which road I was talking about in Scotland. It's called the Apple yeah. Cross Pass. And if you look where oh, Apple right. Cross is, yeah. it's it's on the very sort of western tip of one of the little 
the little sort of yeah. sticky out bits is the best way I can describe them in the Western Highlands. I'd like to down do down towards Sky. I'd love to do that train journey up around the top of Scotland as well. Mm. They can still do it, you know, except it's not sleeping anymore. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, the, the, I'm very disappointed with the sleeper service. No, no, you actually. tell me about it. It was rather intimate with the other well, passengers. Yeah. And the first mm. and the first class, which I then paid for once, yeah. only means that you don't get somebody in a bottom bunk. Yeah. I had this vision of being sort yes, of like uh, a, a Peter Houston off. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. sitting there in a in a, in a, in a in an armchair. Yeah, that's right. With yeah. a sink and a, yeah. and a proper bed and all that. Yeah. And I was sorely mistaken. No, no such luck. Now, what do you make of this uh, uh, F, uh, this league? Uh, well, uh, it's scenario? nonsense. It's nonsense. Because I wanted, I mean, mean to ask you about this before the it's end nonsense. of the week. It's nonsense. I did a study it's, it's when a I big was story. when I was director of communications of the Football Association. Uh, well, you know, what, you had any time to do any study? Well, it's true. I was a very very busy man and uh, one of the most influential uh, football administrators in this country. Well, you were too and, busy leaking secrets and, to uh, and, anything, and really. possibly in Europe. Really? Um, I did a study on what would happen if we expanded the number of professional teams. Yeah. And the answer all, always and was and always will be, mm. more teams will go bankrupt. Yes. Because you can't do it. Do you know what more teams want rather than going professional? What? They want to go part-time. Yeah. Now, what the... What the part-time? Yeah, what what do go... you mean? With, with, with players, with the, exactly. the, the staff exactly. and everything? Exactly. Let really? me tell you. Let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about, right? You see, um, th- at the moment, there's the Premier League, yeah. which has got 20 teams, yeah. and then three teams of 24, That's right, 72, yeah. 92 altogether. Yeah. Why they want to expand, I have no idea. They're just trying to grab a bit more power well, by having they... more clubs to control, yeah. OK? Well, what they want to do is create yeah. a, a, a third division, effectively, below the, the, the you know, Division 1 and 2. We've they already wanna... got it. It's called the National Conference, yeah. and it's sponsored, so it, it doesn't need any improvement. But and... what they would get, right, is if mm. they took four teams out of the, 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 the you know, the League Division yeah. 1, 2 yeah. and 3, yeah. uh, then to create a fourth one, they'd yeah. take four teams out of each of those, right? Yes. Uh, which are given 12, so they need to bring eight teams in. Exactly, eight but new what teams. what I don't understand yeah. is if there's no money at yeah. the bottom level of, of League Division exactly. 2 yeah. and 3, yeah. then why would it's, there it's, be it's more it's money a, if they put more teams it's in? It's utterly ridiculous. Let me let me tell you this. Take take my hometown, Chester, OK? Yeah. Now, Chester, on one occasion, sold a big block of land next to their ground, which mm. was then Sealand Road, right. and it became a... Uh, what you call it? You know, a, industrial a, estate, a, yeah, a trading estate, yeah. um, trading estate, right. carpet uh, warehouses and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. With that money, Chester went bonkers, started travelling first class to away games on trains and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and buying players, and buying players, which got them up into the third division. Right. And in those days, it was first, second, third, fourth. So did they regard that as a success? Absolutely. Yeah. Because because the thing is, they spent the whole of their life in the fourth division. Mm. They, I think, they had the record for the number of times they applied for readmission. Because in those days, you didn't get booted out of the league when you finished bottom of the fourth division right. you had to apply for re- you had to apply for re-election uh-huh. and you always got back in right. so anyway Chester got ambitious and started spending his money the problem was when the money ran out Chester were then saddled with a load of players who they, they couldn't, couldn't afford, afford pay. absolutely right. And a ground that was so knackered they hadn't bothered investing mm. in it, which was falling to pieces. Right. Chester went back into the fourth division and then out of the football league. So all the money had gone on players and on travel it had been and wasted. On sort of all that. It had been wasted. They right. thought that money was going to come in forever. Yeah. Now when you spoke to the people there they actually, where they are now, outside of the Football League, mm. they're in the National Conference, right. they are a much happier club than and how they, do they were. Ma- and how do they make money then? Well, they make money, you see, in a smaller way than they did before. They don't get any... They get very little TV revenue, yeah. although I think they were twice... The old FA Cup match or something uh, like old that. The old FA Cup match. And, and on a day like a bank holiday when there's no league football, right. they play Wrexham, mm. and that's because it's a local derby, yeah. Chester Wrexham. That's a live game. They get money for that. That's okay. no problem. Right. But not huge amounts. Yeah. I mean, 20,000 or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Something like that. And do they make any money at all from the gate? They're... Well, yes, they do. This is the point of my story. You see, when it becomes a smaller family club... Yeah. They've got a very active social club. They've got a very active bar in the main stand. They 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 can charge you know min, you know reasonable sort of rates for seats and all that kind yeah. of stuff because they've got a new stand now and a, a new. They'll probably have the odd box. The odd box and that kind of stuff. Sponsorship from local businesses because yeah. they like having their board around the edge of the pitch yeah. and on the roof of the stand and right. all that. And they make enough money to go. Mm. But the the thing is, and and by the way, Wayne Rooney's brother plays for them. He's their, right. he's their lead striker. Oh, right? Okay. And and uh, but the the point is that. If they went back into the league, mm. everything would go up by 50%. Yeah. The players would want more money. Yeah. The cost of running the club would in, increase. The cost of buying players would increase. Yeah. They're very happy where they are. Yeah. Very happy. And you ask any Chester fan now, do you want to go back into the football league? Mm. They say, no, every year we love finishing just outside the top four. Right. And so the idea that there's eight clubs in this country who are desperate to become full-time professional members of the football league... I think is a myth. Yeah. Well, one of the things that they're saying is, is they want to do away yeah. with midweek fixtures yeah. and try and do away with fixture congestion. But that seems to me to be much more of a problem in the Premier League than it is much in any more. of the leagues down below. Much more. Because they're talking about maybe having uh, uh, some kind of uh, Johnson Paint Trophy 
playoff type group yes. stage yes. thing going on. Yes. Uh, when there's international weeks and I it know. seems to me that they haven't really yes. thought it through. And they're also still talking again about these, um, you know, Premier League B teams that yes. might come in, rubbish. which is obviously kind of by the side door. Which is one of Greg it's, 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 utter, it's utter rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, the, the money in football can only be maximised in the Premier League. Yeah. Everything below in the Football League, they have squeezed every last drop out of it, honestly. Yeah. It was a brilliant idea to turn Division 2 into the Championship. Yeah. Uh, you know, name Division 1 the Premiership and Division 2 the Championship. I spoke to the guy who came up with that idea years ago when yeah. I was at the FA, right. and I advised him to get on with it because mm. I said that will make it different. And yeah. it is. It, there is a bit of a pa- the, oh, yeah. panache about the Championship, yeah. you know what I mean? There is. Some, and particularly now because if you get very to, big club, to the it? top end of it, yeah. then you can get, I mean, you know, that yes. game, what, what do they call it, the £170 million pound game? game, yeah. Yeah. I mean that's an incredibly yeah. exciting prospect, uh, isn't it? and there are some very you know big clubs in the in the championship. Yeah. But for the rest of it, I, I, you just forget it. The, the thing about the midweek games, if you look at the figures, yes, the crowds do go more on a Saturday than midweek. But when it's a midweek game at Old Trafford or Goodison Park, people might travel fifty or sixty miles from yeah. North Wales to go to that game. Right. So that becomes an ordeal. Mm. But midweek games for clubs like Chester. They walk to the ground yeah. from Sealand Road like and, they do and, on a Saturday. And presumably contributes to their, in, their, exactly. their balance sheet and all the rest of exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. I've got a text here from John in the Wirral yeah. uh, who says, with regards to the extra league as a Tranmere Rovers Ooh. fan, I would be delighted to be back in the Football League and it would be great. I don't think it would work for Tranmere. Mm. The trouble with Tranmere is they're like Chester. They live in the shadow of huge clubs. Yeah. Tranmere live in the shadow of Everton, Liverpool. Chester live in the shadow of Everton, Liverpool, Manchester United and Manchester City. Yeah. And that's why they can't attract, you know, gates of over 2,500. Yeah. And also... Which, they, think, which they're very happy with. One I thing think. that you said, which is interesting, which is probably a subject for another day, yeah. is, you know, they all thought, they thought the money was going to be there forever. Yeah. There's an element of that in the Premier League, you know, because I don't think is. the money that is now currently being paid by Sky yeah. is going to be there forever. Yeah. And then what? Well, it was very interesting, wasn't it? The other day when I did the paper review with yeah. Mr Brazil, oh, yeah. one of the stories that came up was that Google might mm. be competing for TV rights along with BT and Sky at yeah. the next round. Right. Well, as long as there's competition, the money will still get, be, yeah. be, get, keep going up, I suppose. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, Mike, the, the sources of the money are going to change mm. dramatically over the next five, six years. Yeah. And therefore, will the new paymasters be as generous to the clubs as the current ones are? Mm, yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah. Well, we will talk about all of that, I'm sure, uh, coming up in the next week. Coming up very shortly, though, it's time for the Porky Quiz. Lots more as well. This is TalkSport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Sport. We are the two mics. The Porky Quiz coming up very, very shortly. Before we get to the Pirates, though, I've got some bad news for you. I don't know if you saw this story. Somebody bad news tweet- for me. Some bad news for you. Yeah, somebody tweeted it to me a yeah. bit earlier on in the day. Yeah. And it's from uh, a journal called The Caterer. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know whether you were familiar with that one. Or that's one the of the Caterer, ones no, I don't, don't subscribe get. to that, no. It's, it sounds like something that I may have applied for a job with many years ago. Yes. But I, I don't know if I did. J.D. Weatherspoon to sell off 45 pubs. Really? Why is this? And apparently, Why is uh, this? they say, they don't say that it's because they're in any kind of trouble, mm. but it's their third significant sell-off in less than a year. Mm. Last June, it sold 20 pubs, mm. followed by another 34 in November, uh, which was then described as the biggest sell-off in the company's 36-year history. What they say is, yeah. uh, we've got more than 950 pubs across the UK and the Republic of Ireland, and we look at the, uh, the estate uh, mm. and to make commercial decisions, the company has looked at its estate and taken a decision to put a number of pubs up for sale. Mm. So I presume it must be just pubs that are not performing particularly yeah, well, Yeah, I think right? you're right. But That's, it says yeah. some 23 of the 45 pubs are in London and the South. Yes. All are in town or city centre locations in yeah. England, Wales, and Scotland, uh, and it says that 33 of the 45 properties have been brought to market for the first time. Right. So you might find when you want to go to your next Weatherspoons, it's not there. Well, you could be right. I mean, the two Weatherspoons in most towns uh, around me. Yeah. At least two. Right. But they but, were. I mean, do you notice, say, one is busier than another or something like that? They're always very busy, as mm. far as I can tell. And, and today, by the way, Friday, they serve more fish and chips than any chain of restaurants in the world. Mm. They, I mean, they literally sell hundreds and hundreds of plates of fish and chips right. in every pub. Yeah. They, they, they almost keep the, the fishing industry going. Did we not do the story lately of when they've, they're now no longer doing a Sunday roast because they've got other yeah, things that's right. going on? that's right, yeah. Mm. yeah. But I, I, I quite agree with that because you can go to Carvery for Sunday roast where they, they do it en masse. They've got the right ovens and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I don't know whether Weatherspoon's uh, kitchens are, are geared up for that. They're much better serving fish and chips. Well, all opinion. I'm saying is I'm just giving you a word of warning. Yes. You suddenly, well, you'll have to keep your eyes peeled. 
I think. You have to keep us informed if they're shutting any of them down. The thing is that beer in Weatherspoon's pubs is so cheap that they must work, I think, on fine margins. Yeah. And therefore, I think if they find a pub that's underperforming yeah. and it's to drain on their overall revenues, they would get rid of but it. But there's a pretty good chance they're not if they sell off a big... Because they're mostly pretty big places. But yeah. it's going to be pretty hard for anyone else to run it as a pub. Well, and this... it might mean another... Yeah, you know, it might be another 45 pubs disappearing. It could be. Uh, I've told you, I think, before, on the road that takes me from the M27 motorway down to where I live in Gosport, yeah. I have counted 11 buildings that used to be pubs, which are not anymore, yeah. closed down. Yeah. They've turned into spa shops. They have been converted into flats. Uh, I'm trying to think what other um, things have happened to... Hairdressers. Uh, not, I don't remember a hairdresser, but I mean, they've all been, you know, some of them have been knocked down. Yeah. One of them, which was called. There's the re- a couple down in Sussex that yeah. have been turned into things like Chinese restaurant. Yes, that's right. That Chinese restaurant, restaurant, uh, they've been converted into restaurant. One, I think, is now an opticians. I mean, I mean, they've just found other uses for the building. And you can understand with the, with the dramatic cut in the armed forces, and all these pubs used to have names related to ships. They yeah. HMS Trafalgar, right. um, the Jolly Tar, mm. uh, the Three Tons, yeah. all this kind of stuff. You yeah. know, Three Tons is still going, actually, I think. I think it's still going, um, but but they have they have had a, a clear problem over the years. You yeah. can tell. Yeah, no, no. Over, over so. recent years, I mean, it's not yeah. easy. I mean, that's going to be something I'm going to be doing. Um, interestingly enough, this weekend yes. uh, on the blood erasure front, because my oldest, well, my oldest son yes. is now 21. So I take him for a Golly. Drink. That's fantastic. Which I've never been able to do. No, it's brilliant, yeah. Because they're quite hot on it in America. You have to have ID and all yeah, yeah. you can't really take anybody if they're underage. And is he um, rendezvousing with you and he your is. sisters? He's driving up from oh, uh, DC, yeah. Excellent. That's quite a drive, isn't Which, it? Which uh, it is. It'll take him probably about six, hours? six seven hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say, yeah. yeah. From DC through. Up 95, basically. Yeah, that's, absolutely, yeah. Up through Baltimore, through yeah. Baltimore, Delaware, yeah, that's Philadelphia, yeah. Delaware, New Water Jersey. Gap, yeah, yeah. And all that. New Jersey, so very yeah. Very interesting indeed. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Um, right, now then, I tell you what I was going to talk to you about. What were you it's, uh, it's an important about? issue before we come to the quiz. And that is the, um, the feeling in life that uh, if you're too nice to people, you lose out, OK? Yes. Have you got this? Well, you've always felt that way, haven't you? Uh, I've always felt this you way. You don't think it's very good to be nice to people? Well, no. I Although, th- in your newest incarnation of, yes. of sort of kind mm, of gentler mm, porky, mm. which is slightly unnerving me, yes. uh, it may be, uh, I don't know whether it's going to be something that you're going to keep up with, yes. uh, whether you're going to lapse back into your normal belligerence. Yes. Uh, well, well, are you? I, I don't think I'm belligerent anyway. You but... are, you're almost always belligerent. No. Um, the thing is, if you never say no and always put others first, mm. right, you're going to have a miserable life. Yes. So, so I've come across a, um, a, a you know, a, a book actually, which has said, "Stop it," and and this is what you do. Okay, yeah. um, stop overcommitting yourself. Stop saying yes to things. That's okay? a good idea. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and just decide what you want to do. Mm. Right. Don't always defer to others. If someone asks you what do you want and you find yourself saying whatever you want yeah. or whatever's easiest, yes. don't do that. I agree with that. Don't do that. I agree absolutely with that. On the overcommitment, mm. uh, you do things because you think it makes people happy. Well, don't. Make yourself happy, OK? Yes, I agree with that as well. Are you too tolerant? Everyone has to put up with people and situations that aren't perfect. Yeah. That's life. Yeah. Uh, and being adaptable can be a positive attribute. However, spending too much time and energy ignoring stuff that bothers you can leave you feeling frustrated, yes. tired and secretly angry. I agree with that as well. And it's time to think about what you want and yeah. what you're boundaries are right yes. well i think that's part of growing up isn't it that you yep. know a lot of people go around thinking yep. that they need to please people don't like upsetting people yes don't like sort of people thinking they might not be very nice yes I've, I've never really cared very much about that okay now you're moving house and a friend asks if you need help yeah you turn that person down because you don't want to burden them you say no when you mean yes but change that now yeah well if i somebody, would never say no but i mean if yes. somebody offers you help and wants to you know help you sort yourself out mm. just say yes thank you yeah and take advantage of them yeah unless it's somebody that wants to just kind yeah. of you know somehow attach yeah. themselves to you yeah. which can sometimes be also just as bad yeah that's uh, right and, and you know even though you, they know that you need that you need yeah. their help yeah you yeah. actually sometimes have to say no yeah because otherwise you let somebody into your life who becomes a nightmare yeah that's right now then um, get out of the habit, which most British people do, of saying sorry yes. every time you're in a situation where something goes wrong, yeah. even a minor incident. And, they, and you pretend like yeah. it's your fault. Yeah. Sorry, you yeah. know, you bump into somebody. Mm. Uh, you don't catch the door for somebody yeah. when you're, they're moving through it. Yeah. Uh, you spill a bit of a drink in a pub. 
but you don't actually spill it on anybody, and you just, oh, sorry, yeah. stop saying Although sorry. Although I think there is a part of the British psyche that, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, even though I don't mean it, yeah. I will occasionally say sorry to somebody I bump into yeah. if they bump into me first. Yes, but you know, you know, uh, you, you you will start sounding like a doormat. Yeah. People will think, oh, mm. that, that guy's a pushover, OK? Well, you know, living in New York did it for me. Yes. It completely changed, not changed course, my personality, yeah. but yeah. when I came back from there yeah, and nobody started says working sorry. in London, yeah. um, people thought I was really rude. That's right, nobody says because, sorry in New York. Because I wasn't, yeah. wasn't British anymore. Exactly, you know? yeah. Now, this is one which you'll accuse me of, right? Mm. Um, people who never boast or complain have no self-regard. Uh, you hate to boast about your achievements or moan about the little niggles in life because you don't want to make others feel uncomfortable. But always bottling up your emotions is not healthy. Yes. Come to an agreement with yourself, right, that you can talk about your achievements in life and can let others know without feeling that you are being boastful. I yes. totally agree with that. I don't think I there's anything t- wrong I... with, with talking about yourself up to a point. Yes. But, you know, the problem with your boasting yes. is that what you do is you put yourself at the centre of everything. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Well, you're always the best at everything whenever you tell the story. Well, you know, I know. You were the number one reporter in Newcastle. Well, yeah, I was. You yeah. know, with the news primo at the Daily Express. I was. Uh, you were the head hon show at the, you know, uh, ill fated uh, television station yeah. that you ran. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're always the guy right at the centre of it. You Director can't just, of communication yeah, at the FA. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you were like yeah. running the FA. You can't yeah. ever just be taking part in something. You have to be well, running I, it. I, 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 you have to be honest, right? Now, here's Here's another one which is quite controversial, OK? Yeah, the person who always stick to their promises yeah. is a mug. A mug? A mug. Well, I don't promise anything that I can't deliver. Right? Right. Do you? Um, I don't think you do, actually. I don't, no. No, I don't. No, I'm very reliable. But if, I think I mean, you, you'll sometimes promise something you're not sure you can deliver, but you make sure you deliver it anyway. Or I explain why it wasn't delivered. But yeah. I, I normally... You I normally, blame somebody else. One, one thing I can't stand is if people say they'll do something for you and they yeah. don't do it. Yes. You know, if somebody says, oh, I'll get you a couple of tickets for yeah. the match. Yeah. And, that, and, and then, then they don't think you're ever going to come back. But then they make but, you feel like you're bugging them. Yeah, then you give them a ring and say, mm. get them a couple of tickets. Yeah. Oh, what? Did I? Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah. No, you should have rung me last week or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I can't stand people like no, that. That's not if good. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it, right? Yeah. So, for instance, I might be bladderated yeah. and somebody... So that sounds unlikely. No, no, here, I was bladderated. I bumped into some guy. He told me that his son mm. was um, uh, about to go on a golf scholarship to... America, okay. and it was a short-term one, mm. it was three months or something yeah. like that, and he was he was sounding people out as investors because uh-huh. his son was going to be a great professional yeah. golfer, you know? Right. So you buy a piece of him. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I, I said quite blithely, I, I said, oh, put me down for 500, yeah. you know? So anyway, about three or four days later, mm. he sent me an email, right. uh, and I could barely remember it, but I thought, well, if I've said that, I'm definitely going to yeah. do it. So I sent him a cheque for 500 quid. Yeah. But... Next time I'm sure I saw you admit him, to this on national radio, you're going to get a lot of emails now from people no, saying, no, you know, no, 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 you no. remember that time you told me you give me a grand? No, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. But no, now what happened was the next time I met him, yeah. I said, "How did you?" Like, he said he never went. I said, "Why?" He said, "Almost every investor who said they put money and never paid up." Oh, what happened we, to your five hundred quid? Well, I, I told him to keep it. To be honest, what? I, I told him to keep it. Seriously, well, surely you should have given it back to you. No, no, no. I, I said keep it because he was actually he missed that one, but he was going for another one. You right. see what I mean? So I said, "Yeah, we'll keep my money." Well, well, where is he now? Uh, he's been to America and done the course for yeah. three months and come back. Right. And his dad now caddies for him at sort of youth uh, golf okay. tournaments. Right. Yeah. So he might yet hit, hit the big time. He might do. He might do, yeah. 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 Have you got something in writing? No, I haven't got anything so in writing. So you're too trusting in many ways. I know? am, yeah. yeah. You are way too trusting. Oh, I am. You let people take advantage I t- of you. I take on jobs sometimes and, and, and somebody says, look, we'll get a contract. I said, don't worry about a contract. Yeah. You know, we'll have a gentleman's agreement. Get yeah. on with it. I fall and follow that many times. Really? Because either A, the money doesn't arrive, mm. or B, when it does, it's about half of what you... Yeah. T- well, agreed verbally. To be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, shocking. Oh no, I've fallen foul of that loads of times. I'd be a multi-millionaire now if. Uh, I thought you were a multi-millionaire. I'd be a multi-multi-multi if um, <laughs> you know if if uh, people had been honest with me and what yeah. they promised to pay me over the years. Indeed. Telling you. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I still haven't got to the bottom of it yet. I'm going to get to the bottom of it soon. What, it's wrong with Porky. He's turned into this really nice bloke in the what? last week. You mad? Maybe it's me rubbing off on you. I don't know what it is. Anyway, yeah. coming up next is the Porky Jinx. Not the Porky Jinx, the Porky Quiz. Thank you. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Why is the rum gone? Why is the rum gone? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor early in the morning? Way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises early in the morning. Yes, the rum is gone. Why is the rum gone? 
very much a seafaring theme yes. this morning, isn't it? Because, a jolly uh, tar. Uh, indeed. We've got a pirate's quiz for yes, Porky, the Porky yes, yes. quiz, which uh, he hasn't done too badly on recently. Yes. Uh, did all right the Top Gun quiz. He didn't do well on the Leicester quiz, I have to say. Yes. Uh, but uh, as ever, uh, we've got ten questions for you. Excellent. Uh, no multiple choice answers. Uh, Excellent. There will be just one correct answer. Good. Um, and, uh, of course, if you get one correct, yes. you will hear this sound. Captain to you, you scum! Yes. Uh, if you get one wrong, you will hear this sound. You are, without doubt, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm right. going to try and identify those in case you have somehow yes. uh, come into being on the, on the actual quiz itself. Right, okay. are you ready for question number one? I am. What was Blackbeard's real name? Uh, Blackbeard's real name was... Um... Now, let me see, let me see. He used to, um, to make himself really fearsome, mm. he used to light bits of calico and put it in his beard, so it was all this uh, smoke coming off him when he approached a prisoner. Right. And then he'd lash the prisoner to death. Right. Put him under the boat. Mm. Um, and his real you name... You not any points for that. Uh, no, hang on, hang on. His, his real name, uh, Blackbeard, Blackbeard's real name mm. was... Oh, no, hang on, hang on. I know this, I know this, don't worry. I'm just thinking aloud, thinking aloud. It was... Blackbeard's real name was um, Blackbeard. 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 It was. This is either some amazing hang ruse. On, hang on. Hang on. No. 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 It was. It's on the tip of my tongue. Is it? Yeah. He used to cut people's tongues out as well. Um, let me just think. Now it was Blackbird. Was no, was Blackbird. Uh, uh, Blackbeard. <laughs> sorry. Blackbeard. Yeah. Blackbeard was a song written by uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah. Imagine if it was Blackbeard. Yeah. Yeah. Blackbeard's real name was. Henry Walters. Incorrect. No. Oh, without doubt, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. It was Edward Thatch. Edward Thatch. Or sometimes known as Edward Teach. Edward but it was Teach. definitely Edward. Edward, Edward. Question number two. Right. Who was the inspiration for Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean? Um, who was the inspiration for him? Yes. His inspiration for him was Keith Richards, the Correct. Rolling Stones uh, Correct. rocker. Thank Captain you. Captain you, you Why do you complain about that not being a question about pirates? Ooh, 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 ooh. You sure you Sorry? don't want to complain about that not being a question about pirates? But he played his father in a subsequent film, mm. therefore he had acted as a pirate. OK. Yeah. Question number three. Yep. Can you name the two women convicted of piracy during the early 18th century? Mm, two women convicted of piracy. Now, one of them was a woman called Kate. Thinking aloud, thinking aloud. Sorry, just thinking aloud here. Kate... And uh, she she was known as Kate the Cutlass because uh, she used to wield a mean sword and uh, cut um, her men's ears off if they uh, disobeyed her. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Think right. aloud, think aloud. OK. So Kate the Cutlass and the other one was known as um, Black Annie. Black Annie and Kate the Cutlass. Yes. Incorrect. Yeah. No. Oh, without doubt, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Mary no. Reed and Anne Bonny. Yeah, but they were known by their... their no. they, they were. Well, why would she be called Kate the Cutlass if her name's Mary? Because she used to wield a mean cutlass and... Why wouldn't she be Mary the Cutlass? No, because Mary didn't uh, rhyme with uh, Cutlass. No, they were not... None of them were known as that. I think you'll find Mary they are. I think you'll find they are. I, I think, think you'll find I got them they're right. They're right. Question number four. Yeah. In what century is piracy first documented? In which century mm. is piracy first documented? I reckon that was... Uh, now, it'll surprise people, this, but it goes back to the um, origins of mankind. Uh, the Phoenicians, thinking aloud, thinking aloud, the Phoenicians used to steal the slave boats from the Mesopotamians, and all that happened in... I might have to segregate them. Hang, hang on, hang on. It was in the first century. I'm going to give you half a point oh. for the Phoenicians because you're partially right there. But right. It's actually, co the correct answer would have been uh, the 14th century BC. 14th century, which is a very long time ago. BC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but the Phoenicians were involved. They so were. I'll give you half a point. Right. Great. And I think I'm being very generous. Great. Uh, question number five. Yes. When was the Piracy Act made into law, which made piracy with violence punishable by death? I'm looking for a year. Yes. Piracy punishable by death. Mm. I believe that to have. B, the expansion of the British Empire, we'll know. 1763. Incorrect. No. Without doubt, the 1937. Oh, it wasn't that late. No, well, it was no, no a there was way. a piracy law before then, I'm sure there was. Yeah, but not the one that made piracy with violence punishable by uh, death. That was the question. Uh, question number six. Right. The pirate flag was the Jolly Roger. Yes. What was its origin? The Jolly Roger. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm not sure you're right about that. The piracy flag was the skull and crossbones. Um, the Jolly Roger was a 
it was a Royal Navy flag, actually, the Jolly Roger. It wasn't a piracy flag at all. Well, the Skull and Crossbones and the Jolly Roger, according to Jolly history, Roger. are more or less the same thing. Yeah, Jolly Roger and Skull and Crossbones. Right, you wish to know what? I wish to know the, the origin, origin okay. of, Thinking of aloud, the flag. Thinking aloud, yeah. it was... You'll probably have a bit of wiggle room with this answer. Yes, yes, yes. Well, first of all, the, uh, the Skull and the Crossbones were the remains of your enemies. Your enemies, OK? Because mm. what you did is... What you did is... I'll tell you exactly how it came about... When you captured uh, other pirates or when you decided that your own crew needed severe punishment, you marooned them on islands. And then when somebody else came up on the island years later, all they found was a skull and crossbones mm. uh, left in the dirt because all they left you with was one bottle of rum. So why would there be a skull and crossbones left behind? <laughs> well, because all the skin had... Uh, f- so what, you immediately had a skull and just two bones? Yes, because they used really? to... No, they used to... No, this is true. Mm. The true piracy way to die with honour was to lie there with your arms folded across your chest, mm. OK? So that's where the, the, the crossbones happened, came from. What happened to your collarbone, then? What? What happened to your collarbone? Uh, well, that was irrelevant. Really? That was irrelevant, really. Okay. Um, and the... Oh, also, of course, remember mm. that they used to put the skulls of their enemies on the front of the ships mm-hmm. uh, initially, OK? And and that would uh, instil terror into more enemies. Right. Okay? So is that your answer, then? That's my answer. Incorrect. No! I'm well, afraid not. No. Old I've Roger was actually uh, uh, a name in the 18th century for the devil. And a Jolly Roger yeah. uh, was the name given to a jovial, carefree man, yeah. uh, which was a grinning skull. And so basically the pirates adopted a mixture of the two to make up the Jolly Roger and the skull. Sounds and convoluted, that to yeah, me. Yeah, it's a true answer. That's, I don't think that's a true answer. You said a lot of mythology about piracy. I knew we'd run into this problem. Question number seven. The answers I'm giving you are from historic, historical um, texts. Really? Yeah. Well, you've got one and a half out of uh, six so far. Mm. Question number seven. Yeah. In 2011, Somali pirates attacked dozens of ships. Mm. How much was paid to them in ransom money that year? Uh, $50 million. Incorrect. No! You are without doubt the worst it was it $150 million? Well, I knew it was like in that there sort was of a range. Fifty in there. Yeah. Range, yeah. Question number uh, eight. Yes. What is the name of Sir Walter Scott's novel on piracy set in seventeenth-century Shetlands? Mm, Shetlands. The Shetlands. Yeah. The Shetlands. Sir Walter Scott. Sir Walter Scott. Yeah, wrote novel a book. on piracy. Piracy. Yeah. What's the name of the book? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Why are you hmm. looking at me like that? No, I've got this in my head. Have you? In my head. Okay. Think aloud. It was. It was. Now, I'll tell you what it was, and it wasn't kidnapped. That was written by Robert Louis Stevenson. I can't answer any questions. No, no it wasn't kidnapped. It, it was... I know it was... I think it was called... Mm. I think it was called... I think... Uh, thinking aloud... Go on. I think it's the Golden Fleece. Incorrect. No! Oh, no doubt the worst <laughs> pirate I've ever heard of. Was it was it called? called The Pirate. <laughs> Which is a great name you for a book that's about funny, pi- I do, you? yeah. That's very funny. I do. Who else wrote a book called The Pirate? Uh, I don't know. I haven't got it written down here. Harold Robbins. Did he? Yes. The Pirate? Yes. Are you sure? It's certain. All right. Yeah. Well, that doesn't figure in the quiz. Yeah. Question number nine. Yes. Uh, you've got one and a half out of eight so okay, far. I'm doing well. Uh, I suggested you would get three. Mm-hmm. Uh, which American baseball team has pirates in its name? Pirates. Well... Uh, I know the answer to this, but I'll, I'll tell you how the logic will go. OK. It's obviously a team on the coast, because they have a port. Which coast? Ah, well, you see, this is what I'm getting to. Ah. The pirates are... Um, now then, the pirates... Uh, right, OK, OK. Mm-hmm. I think we're getting there. OK. I'm saying California. IA. I can't give you any hints at West all. West Coast. I can't, I can't West tell you coast. which right track California or wrong track IA. you're on. Uh, could be could be up high uh, west coast. Could be Seattle, but it's not Seattle. Just think it allows. Okay. It allows. Let's see pirates. Uh, I'm almost pretty damn certain here. We're talking San Diego Pirates. Incorrect. No, oh, without doubt the worst. <laughs> it's the San Diego Padres. Uh, well, it's close. It's not far away. Yeah. It's Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh's not on the coast. I never said it was on it's the inland. coast. You're the one that said it was on the coast. Pittsburgh's a steel city. Yeah, it is. It's not even a river. But they called the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm. It's about alliteration, isn't it? That's a... That's a that's you call yourself the Pirates because your name begins with P. I yeah, thought you'd go for that. That's rubbish. So I'm afraid mm. uh, you've only got one and a half out of nine. Yes. So you can't even get to the three that I thought you were going to get. Yes. Uh, so final question to yes. get two and a half out of ten. Right. Who played Captain Hook in the 1991 Spielberg movie Hook? Oh, Captain Hook. Yes, Captain Hook. Captain Hook, Spielberg movie. Yeah. But that was about Peter Pan, wasn't it? Well, it was about Peter Pan and Captain Hook, yeah. 
I, I know who Captain Hook was. Who was it? Captain Hook was, in fact... In fact... <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. Correct. Hey. 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 Woo, 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 woo. Oh. Now, woo, why are you not woo, complaining? Woo, you only, woo, the only two woo, you got right woo, yeah. were the two film questions. Yes. You didn't get anything right about pirates at all. Well, I can... Normally uh, you complain no, about no, the film no, questions. No, I can see the, the image in my head of Dustin Hoffman playing uh, Captain Hook. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that was good. Right. And, of course, see, Dustin Hoffman will forever be in my affections because he played uh, Bernstein and Woodward. Uh, well, he didn't play both of them. No, he played one of them, and Robert Redford played the other. And in my youth... Which one did he play? Uh, Dustin Hoffman was Bernstein. Correct. Yes. And in my youth, when I worked at the Birmingham Evening Mail, yeah. me and my mate... Surely uh, when you were running it. Me and my mate, uh, old Ian Sangster, we worked together... You never mentioned in, him before. In the Is he still alive? No, he's, he's, he dropped dead when he was 43. <laughs> uh, no, he had, he had a hemorrhage in the back of his head. Oh, sorry. But we were, we were known locally... Uh, because we were so good as um, as uh, all the president's men. What, when they saw us Birmingham's, approaching, Birmingham's oh, yeah. very own Woodward uh, and Bernstein. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. When they saw us Are you approaching, you sure you didn't call yourselves that? No, no, no. When they saw what us a approaching, load of old cobblers. when they saw us approaching, the police or anything like that, they used to say, "Oh, his." Uh, you think they were making fun of you? No, no. His Woodward no. and Bernstein. Yeah, his Woodward and Bernstein. I think, yeah. they, I think yeah. they were making fun of you. No, no, no. I was known as that by the local chief superintendent, Jock. Jock. Yeah. Ewing. No, 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 no. I don't know what his this surname was. This is all just was. a massive fantasy no, going on in no, your head, isn't it? No, he's, he was. His name was Jock. Mm. He was a good guy. Was he Scottish? No, he wasn't actually. Really? Funny enough, but he was called Jock. Oh, I don't right. know why. There we yeah. are. Two yeah. and a half out of ten. Oh, yeah, uh, that's that pretty was good. The Porky Quiz. Twenty-five percent. I'd admit uh, pass at O level. That would be twenty-five percent. Is a quarter. Uh, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So you think two and a half out of ten is good? You wouldn't, fi- well, you wouldn't pass just, anything with that. I, I, you know, considering piracy is such a huge subject, yeah. and I studied it extensively, yeah. but you managed to find areas which were just not in the text that I read. Nothing to do with me. I, th- I think it's pretty good. OK. I think it's pretty good. you think it's pretty good to get two and a half out of ten. Yeah. You may differ. This is talk mm-hmm. sport. But why is the rum gone? The two mics. Simulcast across the UK on talk sport and talk radio. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on, of course. We'll be back next week with uh, Ask Porky, yeah. with Winners and Losers, yeah. with uh, Porky Vision, Porky Quiz next week. Uh, well, here's one from Michael who says, The answer to Porky's transitioning character mm. is obvious. He's finally found true love. Who's the lucky woman? Uh, no, honestly, the circumstances of my social life have not changed. Mm. I have been very busy with work. You and I have got a lot on at the moment. We okay? have, it's true, yeah. Uh, now, before you go off to America, check mm. on the ticket sales for Dingwalls, please, which yes. is on June the 10th. It is Friday, June the 10th, yes. Because I am told that they uh, there are only not a lot of seats left. They're actually. doing well, they're selling well, yeah. yeah but it's yeah. a big venue, so there's, there, there is uh, tickets there, yeah. but you might want to get yeah. hold of them in the next week or so. Indefinitely. I would say, Definitely. Uh, just to make sure you can get in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here's a couple of uh, very, very daft pirate jokes, Lo- right? Lovely. Uh, which you might want to hear, yeah. based upon the quiz there. Mm. Uh, it's from Steve. Why did the pirate move to Russia? Why did the pirate move to Russia? Mm. Uh, I don't know. To be czar. To be czar. Uh, oh, how did the pirate stop smoking? Uh, I don't know. He used the patch. He used the patch? Yeah, you know, oh, the old yeah, patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why couldn't the pirate play cards? Uh, I don't know. Somebody cut his hands off. <laughs> no, because he was sitting on the deck. Sitting on the deck. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and yeah. then there was one here that came in a little bit earlier on mm. on, the t- on the text, which I should uh, say. Oh yeah, uh, which pirate was always spitting? You might not like this one. No, I, won't. I don't like spitting. No, the Long John Saliva. Oh that's god, Bob that's horrible. Seven. I don't mind that one. Wasn't the one about where does a pilot uh, shop? Where does a pilot shop? Yeah. Oh yeah, where does a pirate shop? Uh, Argos. Yeah, well, not all pilots talk like that. No, they are don't. All, well, not all is, from the West Country, well, you know. there is that thing. You know, Donald, yeah. our guy in Scotland, yeah. um, uh, who put us on at the garage and yeah. is putting us on around the country, yeah. uh, he does. He, he always involves himself in Talk Like a Pirate Day because people do that. There's now an what? official day where you talk like a pirate. What for? For the day. Well, I don't know. They raise money for charity or something. Really? That's yeah. stupid, isn't you it? You've never heard that? And in you... down in, funny, in Hastings, they yeah. have a Pirate Day every year where people dress up as well, pirates. Well, that's great. The and kids they walk do that, around. don't they? Well, yeah, but the grown-ups do it. And it's actually have... very dangerous because if you go there <laughs> yeah, yeah. too late in the evening, yes. there are all these mad people dressed really? as pirates. And do Absolutely, they, completely do they bladderated. floats uh, d- uh, built no, as not, boats not, and no, push they, them up and down the high street and all They have a little bit of a parade, yeah, and they have guys who dress up. that's brilliant. I'd love to do that. Where's that? Hastings? In Hastings, I'm going to do that next year. Well, I'll tell you 
exactly what it yeah, is. Yeah, definitely. And you could come down. Do you know the one I'd really love you to do? You wouldn't have to use much dressing up, really, would you? Oh, 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 very <laughs> funny. Do you know the one I'd love to do? Mm. Uh, there's a town somewhere in one of the Scottish islands yeah. where they fling these blazing uh, baskets around You're their heads. About, are you thinking about the long boat? Uh, yeah, thing that's right. In, that they do. It's the, up in, isn't it up in Orkney? Orkney. I think it's in Orkney. I think it's. I must go there for yeah, that. They That'd have be the. Uh, they have yeah. the sort of the annual. Yeah. Um, it's the Viking thing that they Viking. do. Viking. And they set fire to the longboat and push it out to sea. That's right. Yeah. Now, now, since you mentioned yeah, yeah. me going off to America, exactly. We brought the present in. Sorry? We brought a present in. Why would I want to buy you a present? No, not for me. For my, You said you were going to get my mother a present. No, I didn't. You said you would get her a brooch. No, I didn't. Yes, you no, did. No, I didn't. No. You said, I've got it on tape. No, uh, uh, if no, you no. Pardon the expression. You tried to emotionally blackmail me and suggest I should buy your mother a present. No, I said, why don't you buy her a present? Well, and I'd then like you to said, you I'd, said I'd like you would done. buy her a brooch. Well, I'd, look, I would like to have done. I haven't had time. I have been very busy today. Really, really. Very busy today. Yeah, very busy. Well, and, why'd you leave it to today? Well, I mean, I was, today's I was, the I was, last day. No, I was very busy yesterday. I told well. you I told you on Monday I was No, going. I was very busy yesterday. I'm sorry. And I was busy on Tuesday. You're busy doing what? Busy, eh? Busy doing what? Uh, getting things together. Getting my act together. Getting my act together. Getting your act together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you could spend most of the week in shops. You went to BHS, you went to Debenhams, looking for a clothes yes, horse. Yes, uh, you true. bought yourself a jacket. It's true. I mean, you know, at no point when you were in these shops. two jackets, actually. Two jackets? Yeah, I bought two. Yeah, What's the yeah. second one, then? Another uh, Jasper Conran? No, uh, it's, uh, no, it's similar, though. Similar. Lightweight Conran. for the summer. It's part of my summer. Lightweight suits you very well. It's part of my summer uh, collection, summer wardrobe. Really? You know? Um, but anyway, well, like, well I'll, you know, I'll just pass on your felicitations to my mother and, yes, okay. and I'll apologise for your... Um, very tight waddedness. Well, you didn't no, bother buying her no, anything. I just haven't had the ability, the expansionist of. Maybe uh, I'll get her something in duty free and say it was from you. Uh, Should I do that? Well, I, I don't want to be a fraud. I'll get some perfume or something. I don't want to I'll be a fraud. I'll say it's from you. No, I don't want to be a you fraud. You don't want to be a fraud? No, I don't want to be a fraud. No, no, I don't want to do See, that. See, there's definitely something changed no, no. about you. Uh, you no, spent most of your life as a fraud. Now, listen, this is, I think it's fair to say, a whistle-stop tour to uh, to America, OK? Yeah. How many hours are you going to be on the uh, on, in the new world? Uh, well, I get there around about, I think, one-ish this afternoon, their time. One-ish, yeah, OK. Uh, and I'm there until Sunday night, and I fly out about 11 o'clock Sunday night. So right, OK. I guess I'm there... Not much more than about 48 hours, right? 48 hours, yeah. And, and a bit. Yeah. Now, when you get to Newark, mm. how far do you have to go to the station <laughs> to get the train? Well, that's the reason I'm flying to Newark, because the train station is connected to the airport, which is why that's, I went that way. That's brilliant. Because I could have gone. I mean, my sister offered to get me picked up at Kennedy. Right. But the problem is, it's Friday afternoon. Yes. And what you don't want to do is no, to get a car totally agree. to go up to Kennedy, because I-95... From New York yep. all the way up to say Greenwich no, no. is a parking lot. You know, yeah, you just is. sit on in traffic totally for hours agree. and hours. Because actually, my son is driving up, and I yeah. said, and he said, "Do you want me to pick you up at New York?" And I mm. said, "No, no, I'm going to get a train." So you literally, I, I totally agree. I think you take a monorail from the uh, from customs. Right. Uh, you come out of immigration. Mm. You take a monorail yeah. straight to the train. Yeah. Uh, and then the train goes straight from there through Penn Station yeah. up to Stamford, and I should be in Connecticut hopefully by yeah. about four or uh, four thirty. And that's an Amtrak train. It is. They only have Amtrak in America. They do. Although I had a slight worry because. I saw mm. on, uh, a piece on Twitter, actually, from the yes. Daily News. Yes, So you know that um, elevated part of the train when it comes out of Grand Central? Yes. And it goes up towards Pelham and yes. all those places? Yes, yes. There was a massive fire oh. underneath the uh, the train tracks. Oh, right, OK. Uh, where people have been unbelievably been storing kerosene or something, right? And it all went on fire. Yeah, that's And clever. it was one of those massive American fires. Yeah. And it's buckled all the train tracks, right? Wow. Fortunately, I'm not going on that particular route. Right. Because that's Metro North. Still could be a lot but of chaos but around. But it slowed down yeah, a lot exactly. of the train situation. So, e- I mean, exactly. I would say... Best case scenario, I get to my sister's house about 4.30. Worst case scenario, about yeah. 6. Yeah, you should get there 4.30. Mm. And who's picking you up uh, at the station at the other end? Well, uh, I may... There's another little train that goes from there to where she is, just along the shoreline. Well, can't she um, come pick you up? She could, but again, if I've said to her, if, if I-95 is, is full of cars, yeah. there's no point. How many miles is it? It's only about um, 10, maybe, well, that's, 15. That's not, can't you go a back road or something like that to no, the station? No, there's, there's not really any way to do it. No, OK. You know what America's like. I, I mean, do. it's all this highway or yeah, not. Yeah, I do, I do, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Basically. So I've okay. said to her, mm. if it's very busy, I'll just jump on the little train. Sure. And and, and that's about a 20-minute drive. A lot of travelling. It travel. is, but that's what yeah. you do when you have to go and see your 92-year-old mother. That's well, true, it's true. You know. Yeah, OK, yeah. And my son that I haven't seen really for about a year. And what time do you land back here? About 11 o'clock Monday morning. Right, OK. So yeah. um, I'll get back home about 1, hopefully. OK, good. Um, go for a bit of a sleep. Yeah, good. And yeah. I'll be in here for winners and losers on okay. uh, Monday evening. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you. Of course. Thanks very much indeed. Of course, you won't have a clue about winners and losers because you'll have been completely out of touch. <laughs>
Well, I'd probably so I be... I think uh, I'll have a huge advantage. I'll be handicapped. There's yeah. no question yeah. about that. I won't, well, you're I'll handicapped probably... most of the time just being you. Yeah, well, that's very nice. Yeah. Very nice. You're going to bring won't... a load of duty-free cigarettes back, are you? Well, you can't bring more than 200. To feed your habit. You can't bring more than 200. Yeah, you'll try and smuggle some more No, I will in. not. Yes, I, will. I will not try and smuggle. You're the guy that seems to be involved in piracy and, no, no, uh, you know, no, no. And nefarious activity. I don't think so. Um, but I will probably mm. take a bottle of champagne with me over there, because that's what I usually do. Oh, yeah? Uh, but I'll drink that there. Yeah. I'll buy some cigarettes on the way out. Yeah. And I'll buy some on the way back. But you can't bring more than 200 against the law. Yeah, well, you know, not many people accord to that law, do they? Well, you not in your world. How about this from Nigel? Yep. He says, Pirate Day in Hastings is Sunday, July the 17th this year. Oh, is it? See you there, he says. Oh, I can't come on that day. Actually, we can't because we're in rugby on the 16th. We are we? indeed, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I'd have to That's miss right. out. See, I've started yeah. coughing again. Yeah, well, don't cough. Um, <coughs> Dumb cough is what you normally call me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, don't you giving my lurgy back to me? Thank you. Hmm. I can stay with you. Um, right. Well, that sounds like an exciting trip. Hope it goes well. Thank you. Hope the flight is good yes. both ways. You know, I'm sure it will be. And, and, uh, and, and the security will find out about it because obviously what happened yesterday exactly. with Egypt Air, which yeah. is a terrible tragedy. Exactly. Nobody seems to know what's happened. No. But I imagine security will be pretty tight as well. That's right. And if you could send my very best wishes to your mother, I certainly will. To your sister, to the rest of your family. And uh, tell them, you know, uh, life. Sorry, goes I didn't on. bother buying you anything. <laughs> well, you know, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just no time. This is Talk Sport. Talk sport, we are the two mics. We'll be back on Monday night, as Porky said. I'll have been uh, a, a few miles away for a while, but uh, nothing is changing as far as the uh, uh, the programme is concerned. Uh, I've got this from Andy, who says, Up Helly is the, uh, uh, the festival you're That's talking about, which is yeah. actually in Shetland. Shetland. New Year Festival, Viking Origin. Yeah, so new Year, oh, it's new, on New so Year's, it's, right? I think it's, so it's New Year they Great. do it. Uh, David says this, I was mm. in Brixham three Saturdays ago and it was Pirate Day and there right. were thousands of people dressed up as pirates. Great. So they probably do it in May. Yeah. They might even do it down in Gosport. You should check that out. Yeah, they must do. Oh, that's another thing. Mm. That's another thing. Yeah. You say that I'm always putting myself forward, right? Yeah. Due to public pressure, yeah. I volunteered to switch on the Christmas lights in Gosport this year. Have you? Yes. Volunteered? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Hey, by the way, yeah. did I not hear uh, a, um, uh, you know, I'm off for the, for the weekend, but did I not hear you're on Clash of the Titans again? Yes, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday, three hours Saturday. before the FA Cup final, yeah. Three, so one till four. One till four. Yeah. Well, I didn't ask you to give it a plug. Who's, on, who's on it with you this time? Uh, Jason yeah. Uh, Cundy. Yeah. Alvin Martin. Yes. Me. Yeah. And I'm not sure who else. Well, well that, it was Ian Danter last time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Ian Danter. I'll tell you who I think it is. Mm. It's that chap who does it with uh, Colin Murray. That chap? Yeah. Um, what, you mean Big Daddy Bunce? No, the other guy. Uh, the other guy. Bob Mills. Bob Mills. I think it's Bob Mills. Oh, Bob Mills, yeah, OK. Yeah. But uh, when I look at the collection of the four of us, yeah. I'm not quite sure who's chairing it. Oh, really? It's supposed to be well, Jason. It won't be you, will it? No, it won't be me. I don't like chairing them. I, I prefer to spread my Are you going to be threatening to punch anyone in the wide. face this week? Uh, well, not unless they wind me up the wrong way. Right. Because yeah. that was what you famously said to Martin Lynch. I did indeed. I did mm. indeed, yeah. OK. Yeah. And he better watch so, it because, uh, you know, I don't make either So what threats. date are you switching on the Christmas lights in Gosport? Have they even got Christmas lights in Gosport? Where the hell yeah. do they put them? On the high streets, in the high streets. The high streets? Yes, yes. Oh dear. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit down market, isn't it? No, it's not. It's very it's nice. No red. Very nice. They, they usually spend a lot of money. Are there a waitrose there? Uh, no. 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 I'm not going there. No. They haven't even got a Tesco. <laughs> but they've got a Morrison's. Oh, great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. What are you going to dress up as? Captain Hook? What, to switch the lights on? Yeah. No. I'll dress up as Father Christmas. No. Not much makeup required then. What? It's a bit <laughs> harsh, isn't it? This is Talk Sport. We are the Two Mics. Look at the light! Don't forget to follow the Two Mics at the Two Mics on Twitter and on YouTube. Just look for Two Mics TV. No, the problem with your boasting yes. is that what you do is you put yourself at the centre of everything. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Well, you're almost the best at everything whenever you tell the story. Well, you I know. You no. were the number one reporter in Newcastle. Well, yeah, I was. You yeah. know, with the news primo at the Daily Express. I was. Uh, you were the head hog show at the, you know, uh, ill fated uh, television station yeah. that you ran. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're always the guy right at the centre of it. You so can't just, your communication yeah, you, the FA. You, yeah, you were like yeah. running the FA. You can't yeah. ever just be taking part in something. You have to be well, running I, it. I, 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 you have to be honest, right?
but I love cashew nuts, you know. Cashew nuts? Yeah. In, um, what's your yeah. problem? What's well, your problem? cashew nuts. Cashew nuts, that's what I said. Cashew nuts. Right, cashew saying. nuts, right. I thought you had salted peanuts. I do like salted peanuts, but well, I don't like... cashew nuts? Well, cashew nuts are not as fattening. Cashew nuts are a lot uh, less fattening, are obviously. They? There's less calories in them, oh, right. okay? Well, you've got to worry about that, haven't you? Yeah. Because, I mean, once you've had two portions of fish and chips in a day, you don't want to overdo it on the cashew nuts. I always start with the cashew nuts, actually. Really? If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053am and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. Talk sport. Captain to you, you scum.